Hello. Oh. My goodness, I look tiny. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome to uh, High Rollers, the Dungeons and Dragons show here on the Yogi's Cast Twitch. I just, it's normally I'm so big when, I, when it cuts Stand to me. Up. Hello, I need to loom forward as well. Um, welcome to the D&D show here on the Overcast Twitch, or if you're watching it, on the High Rolls D&D Twitch. Welcome, friends. I am your Dungeon Master, Mark Sherlock Humes, uh, and I'll be taking you on a wonderful adventure in the world of Eroes <laughs> today. <so> long. <laughs> in the world. So empty. Hello. Uh, Can you so, do a high voice for the entire intro? Hi, guys. <laughs> God, no. Anyway, let's oh cut God. and introduce the rest of the party <laughs> away from my tiny, tiny outborn body. There we go. Hey! So we have Kim, Hello. Chris Trott, Hi. and Rhiannon, as always. And then we have on the other side. <laughs> Hello! Sorry, I'm Katie, joining us as well. Uh, Hello. Hello. So we so <laughs> just, TJ put it on the, the group shot. Put it on the, the oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> um, the reason that the cameras are a little bit out of sync today is we were doing uh, it was a bit of a late setup because we were doing a little photo shoot. Photo shoot. We were doing a little photo shoot. Um, so it was a bit late setting up. Uh, welcome, friends. Hope that I'm glad that you could join us here for some Dungeons and Dragons. Let's go over a couple of things before we jump into the action. Uh, first of all, a big thank you to our returning sponsor, D and D Beyond. Um, D and D Beyond is the official uh, Dungeons and Dragons application. Uh, it's got a compendium. It's got campaign management tools. You can create character. Excuse me. You can create characters on it. Really, really great. We use it all the time. It's very fabulous. Mm. Um, I have heard uh, from our friends over in the US that uh, the d and Beyond is having a presidential campaign currently. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mr. What? Sam Regal uh, of Critical Role is, is running as uh, the d and Beyond president. So that's a uh, hotly contested thing. We don't obviously get involved in politics here in the UK. Uh, you know, US politics is a complete alien Wait, thing. Is Sam Regal running for president or president of d and Beyond? President of d and Beyond. Hmm. Right, okay. I thought you meant president of like America. He probably America. could do that. He's a charming, handsome man and uh, he's certainly popular that's on social media. That's all it media, takes to get And there. that's all it takes. Get yeah. the nerd folks. Uh, but no, president of d and Beyond. So we'll be following his uh, campaign very closely. Um, we're not going to do that though. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're just going to play some D&D. &D. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to use D&D &D Beyond because it's a great tool. Uh, and there's loads of cool features. They've in fact just announced that they're actually gathering feedback uh, for the features that they're going to implement this year. Mm. So if you go to D&D &D Beyond's forums, uh, you can see like their, uh, what they're working on. They've got like dev updates. You can go check those out. Um, I, I can't say too much. I've got like a little bit of insider information on what they're working on. I'm very break. excited. I'll tell you on the break. Yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> lots of cool stuff to look forward to. That's D&D &D Beyond. Thank you guys so much for being our returning sponsor. Yeah. Um, one quick thing I want to mention. So we've had quite a lot of people asking us about some of the High Rollers merch that was meant to go out before Christmas. Um, we have just, we've been chasing this up with the people that run the merchandise here at the Yogscast. Everybody who's ordered something should have an email um, if you've been affected and it should be giving you all the information you need, uh, telling you what's going on. If you haven't, please do contact the Yogscast uh, merchandise store. Yeah. You go on store.yogscast.com, there should be contact information for the email. They are responding and they, they will get it's back to you. It's worth mentioning that they have a backlog of emails from Christmas, so they're trying their hardest and actually have some extra people on hand to help yes. them to get through all of this. So please do check your emails and your email will be responded to yes. if it hasn't been already. Um, and we apologize. Yes. We try as much as we can to get as much information to you guys as we can, but this is the first of us yeah. hearing. Yeah, What's sometimes it's down, so. we don't know or don't like know. there's stuff been going no, on and we just don't get updated. So um, but we apologies. apologize for the delays. And yes. I promise yeah. it's going to be worth it because the yeah. guys are people. Yeah, they're beautiful. So we um, aspire to do better for you. Yes. Uh, so yeah. So thank you guys so much for ordering that and and yeah, keep keep on top of your emails. Um, the last thing to just to mention is don't forget if you got Twitch, if you got Amazon Prime, you do get free Twitch Prime sub every month. You can use that for the Yogscast, you can use that for High Rollers D&D. We've got emotes that are specific for High Rollers. So if you're a High Rollers fan and you want to get some cool Twitch emotes, you can go and check that there. Yeah. Uh, and with that... Wait, uh, one more thing. It's Tom's birthday tomorrow! It's Tom's birthday tomorrow! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Yes, please. Well, I already bought him a Big Mac. Let's not spoil him. I bought him a Big Mac meal for his birthday. He's a big boy. Yeah, and I'll... <laughs> I shouldn't have given sugar, actually. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, really happy bad. birthday, Tom. How old are you tomorrow, Tom? I don't know. 
<laughs> uh, 27. 27. What a baby boy. Yeah. Sweet baby boy. Look at you, children. <laughs> Creeping creep towards that 30 um, mark. Oh, yes. no. Yes. Uh, happy birthday, Thomas. Thank you. Uh, and maybe at the break, we'll order our customary waffles and ice cream. Um, maybe. Can we get double? Because we don't celebrate my birthday because I was not here. Yeah, sure. Double waffles. And double. Well, in February, it's going to be a triple birthday. So, yes. yeah. Uh, anyway, with that, let us play the Eroes intro video and crack on with today's adventure. <laughs> yeah. I knew it was coming in. Anyway. Mark just told us all to shut the fuck up. <laughs> it was reaching the end of the video and they were all still talking about video games. But in a really nice way. Yeah. So like, I was like, I... shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut the fuck up for a second. And with that. Welcome. Hello and welcome to Arois. Yes. Would you like a little recap of the story so far? Yes, <laughs> yeah. Well, Please. our party of adventurers left Ironwick after a late night conversation with their new friend, the Eternal Nightfrost. A sentient bow with the ability to change forms. After learning uh, some key information about Nightfrost <coughs> and discussing their worries and some plans for the future, the party made their way on the Golden Road, a trade road which leads to the city of Goldthrone, uh, the kind of capital of the continent or the, the region that they're currently in, Savona. Along the way, you encountered a pair of guardians, uh, the same race as Sentry, this long, uh, kind of forgotten or abandoned or lost uh, race of sentient constructs. Um, you know, more advanced than golems, but uh, uh, not as powerful in some senses. Along the Golden Road, you encountered two of these guardians fleeing from a wyvern which was attacking them. Uh, the party and your allies jumped in to assist and defeated the creature um, with not too, ban too many losses. A, a bit of a, a scary moment for Quillek, but yeah. not too much else. Um, and then you the carried usual. on. <laughs> to the city of Kaylee's Rest. Now, Kaylee's Rest is the second largest city in the region. Um, it has walled city, uh, what is a walled city rather. It has stores, it has temples. It pretty much has a lot of the things that you've not had access to so far in your journey. Um, you arrive there, the two guardians reveal themselves as Tracker and Scout. Uh, Tracker is, a, is an, old, an old guardian, sorry, who is nearing uh, what they call um, shutdown, which is where uh, guardians tend to go feral or go crazy. Um, and he reaches the end of that. And the last thing you had done was go and seek out the field warden, who acts as a sort of uh, sheriff of the town um, in most regional places, uh, called uh, Milika Dornblest, uh, a woman with silver hair uh, who greeted you and kind of gave you a little bit of information about the town. Um, and then that was where we left things off last week. Um, and my biggest question to you now is what do you guys want to do? Because I feel like this is going to be an episode where this is going to really be driven by what you guys are interested in, what you want to seek out in Kaylee's Rest, um, how long you're going to stay here for, and all of that kind of good stuff. Um, so last time we were talking to Malika, weren't we? And we yes. told her about the Wyvern. <clears throat> um, we told her basically yeah, everything. Yeah, told her you basically, basically everything. You said it in a really suspicious way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There was a little bit of uh, inquiring about your activities in Ironwick under a yeah. zone of truth. Um, so what sort of time is it now? Uh, so I believe that you guys had arrived sort of late afternoon. Um, so it's probably not too far, you know, it's kind of beginning to turn night. It's, you know, the, the, uh, the sky is darkening. The weather has taken a pretty bad turn. Um, it, there was a storm, which Ayla realized the storm is on its way. Um, the clouds are pretty dark. Uh, it's beginning to rain very heavily. The wind is howling. Um, hmm. so it's not pleasant outside. 
um, and it is approaching evening. Uh, you are currently accompanied by Valor and Arvel, two NPCs that have been traveling with you since you crash landed, um, as well as Tracker, one of the Guardians, uh, who was offering to basically take you around the city. Yeah. Who seems very un unperturbed by the rain and the weather. Um, you know, not having skin. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. So yeah, so yeah, my big question to you guys now is, is What's the plan? Where do you guys want to go? What do you guys want to do? What are yeah, you interested Quill, in? Quill, leader of the pie. What? We, we, was that Lucia saying that? Or? No. <laughs> okay. No, that was just it wasn't the voice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Malika, you said you wanted to um, clear things up with us. You wanted to verify. I will need some time to verify things. I intend to go and speak with uh, uh, the Sands family um, to okay. inquire about what happened previously. Um, but I have no reason to doubt you. I just like to ensure that everything is in order. Okay. Um, so I would ask that you don't leave town for at least a day. Can we, for example, uh, leave with the two guardians that you already trust, so that we can investigate some things further? I mean, I am not in. I'm not in expecting you to remain here for a day, just within the walls of Kaylee's rest. Oh, I thought it was <laughs> captivity. No. Uh, I just mean day. don't leave the city. I mean, we'll, we'll need a place to stay for the night. Is there anywhere good? There are plenty of inns and taverns uh, or apartments to rent on short-term notice okay. within the city. Um, it depends on how much money you're willing to spend. North Street uh, is full of our more affluent members of the town. Um, South Street and East Street are a bit more affordable. Um, there, is, uh, there is a particularly nice inn called the Dusk Dream Inn on North Street. Um, it is pricey, but it is very comfortable. Uh, there are also the apartments, Golden Road Apartments in North Street. If you didn't want to share your accommodations or be uh, sleep within a drinking establishment, um, the apartments are fully fledged. It's a tenement building that you can hire out, um, which has multiple rooms, uh, cooking you know, facilities, that sort of thing. Um, on South Street, there is one called uh, the Barrel and Over, I believe. It's much more rustic, uh, accommodates to more of the uh, country traveling folk. Uh, and there will be others around the city, of course, but those are the three I, I happen to know of. Okay. Well, I mean, if we're only here for one night, I don't think we need to spend anything too crazy. And then in South Street or... Wood Sleeping in an establishment that is also a drinking establishment sounds ideal. Okay. Well, there, I would recommend <laughs> the Barrel Over or the Dusk Dream Inn. Um, um, so is there far. anything else you would like to know about the town? Um, I'm sure Tracker can give you plenty of information. Yeah, that's right. Well, it's entry. Um, I'm looking to repair Hall of Echo. Um, yes. Is there anywhere I can go to uh, fix Echo? Well, there are a number of artisans in the town. Uh, South Street is primarily where our artisans live. Uh, they tend to congregate around the Temple of Elena, uh, which offers free workshops and benches, and, and artisans often go there for some work. But there are many independent uh, blacksmiths and metal workers. I'm afraid that the Guardian Knowledge Tracker would be uh, more knowledgeable on that than me. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we can help you rebuild your Echo back at my place if you want, Sentry, or uh, you can go to the temple. They'll have plenty of work artisans there that can help. But uh, yeah. me and the others can probably help you with that. Yeah, sounds good. Sentry. We live down in South Street, too. Oh, so. brilliant. Thank you. If you're planning on going with Tracker and Scout, I'd quite like to come along. Yeah? Yes. Maybe we can provide services for kind of... We can talk about this whole, you know, big, glowy, angelic vision some more. Yeah. Like a, an angelic vision, you say? Yes. This woman who stood there listening to the conversation. It's a euphemism. Technically, Zone, Zone of Truth is still, still active. Zoning, yeah. Oh, it's a vision that uh, both Sentry and I have shared by touching Echo that they uh, have this almost godlike entity that came down and saved them. It's called the Prime. The Prime. Interesting. You can see she like looks at it for a moment. Makes a mental note. And I well, Echo. you are free. Uh, Eros is a land of free religion. You are welcome to, to investigate your own worship as long as you're not causing trouble or causing harm. I'm just merely curious. Uh, my own people are connected to celestial beings ourselves, so. She anyway, shall we? Uh, I would say Nova at this point, the silver skin and what she just said about celestial beings. Yeah, she's probably an Asama, yeah. Asama. Awesome. 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 Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, you probably, you, I think Nova would recognize another planar traveler. This is, this lady is not native to Erois. Her people arrived here with tieflings. I have a question. Yes. 
Do you condition your hair or do you just kind of leave it to... I am very blessed in that it is quite natural. It's natural? Yes. Wow. It's a benefit of my kind. Many of, the, many of my people will have metallic traits. Gold eyes, uh, golden skin, silver hair, silver skin, um, metallic sheens in some form. How lucky. We are very, very, uh, very fortunate in that way. You wouldn't believe the products I use. Well, uh, whilst I would love to sit here talking about hair care, <laughs> is there anything else that I can do for you? Um, I do have uh, a few things I need to attend to before the day is done. I know you only told us this five minutes ago, but it was a week ago in other people's time. <laughs> um, you said Kalara was um, asking for help. Kalara the priestess of Kalara, yes. Uh, what was her name again? A slight girl. Uh, Jasna. Rest Keeper Jasna, yes. She, was, she came to me with concerns of a vision or a dream that she had had. And unfortunately, I just don't have the facilities to accommodate visions and dreams. Okay. Um, but uh, private individuals like yourselves, if you are of the kind looking to offer your assistance, I mean, she would be very grateful to that. Um, I believe. Got time. I also believe that the uh, the keeper of the chem the Star Mourner Elanus of the Church of Siaska, uh, also had something he wanted to hire some people about. I mean, we've got one night. We can run, run many errands, I guess, but we well, focus. Your time here is your time. I will not deem to uh, preach or discuss it with you. Okay. Um, but yes, uh, that is everything, I believe. Um, In that case, we'll look for a place to stay the night. Very good. Please stay out of trouble and um, enjoy uh, the city. Should we come to you, you tomorrow, or will you...? I will send word. Okay. Do you know which inn that you intend to stay at? Nope. Probably that one on South Street. Uh, not the, the barrel north one? Over. Huh? North one sounds delightful. It did sound very good. It did. It sounds expensive. Yeah. Mm. It's fine. <laughs> I will. Then perhaps you should come and see me tomorrow. Okay. Around the same time, uh, just before, just as dusk hits. Fine. Okay. Cool. Okay, Mom. Good. Very good. Well, Did good day. That, she kind of gives you a nod. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Okay, Mom. She just kind of gives you a nod um, and then gestures to the door, which opens and you can hear like a somebody stood outside in sort of uh, clerk's kind of uniform opens the door for you. It can't be natural. I, I don't believe it. It's only if she did something and I believe she wasn't telling the truth. Oh, it's perfectly natural. Most ASMR look like that. They do? Mm hmm That straight mm -hmm. hair? Yeah. <laughs> Plain our beings. I don't believe it. Yes. Anyway. So, you are escorted out. <laughs> Whether you don't just stand there having a conversation, you are kind of ushered out eventually. Yeah. Um, and you emerge out into the Queen's Plaza, which is a large uh, kind of circular district, at the centre of which there is this kind of raised hill um, covered in gardens with a mausoleum, a, a beautiful kind of white stone mausoleum, um, which you know to be the kind of, the kind of heart of the town, um, called Cayley's Rest. Um, and it is uh, the mausoleum of Queen Cayley, who is one of the uh, uh, queens of, of Savona, basically. Um, and you are left there. There is, you can see in the distance, there are still some several large buildings. You have the Church of Siaska in this district, which is a large, uh, not quite cathedral sized, but maybe like a very, very large church or a small cathedral with a big domed glass ceiling, which looks up onto the night sky. Um, there is also, which I forgot to mention last time, but would be particularly of note to Quillec, okay. there is a tall spire. Um, and you would recognize this is an Aracoca spire, an Aracoca oh, spire okay. um, and they are called uh, Wayfinder, uh, Wayfinder, Wayspires? Wayspires, I think. I've got so <laughs> many notes. Wayspires. Um, it's a tall stone tower with dozens, if not more, wooden poles and balconies sticking out from it. Occasionally, you see Aracoca will land on uh, the pole or a balcony, collect scrolls or a satchel, um, or deliver them, and then fly off again. Uh, there is a large ground level open door um, and you can see that it is all kind of carved. It's very beautifully decorated in different bright colours. It's kind of all painted in kind of uh, spirals and shapes uh, leading all the way up. It's quite quite pretty. Visible from anywhere. Yes, it can be seen across these. It's the tallest thing um, in the Queen's Plaza district. And there are some buildings which maybe come close, but it's very it's much taller than anything else. Yeah. Um, is there quite see. a lot of Aracocra then? You, right. you see them enough, like they kind of land and then fly off, or they'll emerge from like a little window out onto a pole and then fly off. But it's not like every second, you know, you're kind of seeing them maybe like once every few minutes or, um, and then it goes quiet for like an hour and then it, you know, picks back up again. Um, it's kind of infrequent. Um, so, Sentry, you want to get Echo repaired? Yes, uh, at some point, 
we all want to go to Temple of Hesper. Why are you making that face, Nova? Hmm? Mm -hmm. I was just thinking about, like, um, you don't want to know. Quantum equations, huh? What? I don't want to know, you're right. Echo! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, do you want, this is Arvel kind of gestures forward and he's like, Valor's kind of like looking around the city and you can see Valor is enamored by the fact that she's probably never been anywhere that's as popularly, uh, dense, as densely populated. Um, and she's just kind of looking around in amazement at everything. Arvel's like, do you want me to go and secure rooms? Uh, um, make sure we got that planned. I kind of wouldn't mind to sit down for a little bit. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Keep, uh, okay. keep Valor as close as you can. I will. Okay. Where did we settle in terms yeah, of... Yeah, that was my next question. The Barrel north, and over. The north place? I just wonder if One we should... One vote for each. If we should be near um, Tracker and, and Scout. They yeah, were at South Street, right? They're the Everything, people we know. True, yeah. Everything that sounded good was that away. So All right, sure. Would you like some way. money yeah. for us, Arvel? I don't know how much. Uh, well, I mean, I, it depends on if they ask me to pay up front. I mean, I can try and get them to, you know, we pay when you guys check in or you come back. But if you want to, if you trust me to give me the money now, I can put the down payment down. Yes, how, how much, much do you need? Well, well you got the bank depends on right, how much fund. it is. It can't be more than, I don't think it will be more than two gold per room per night. So it depends on how many rooms they have and everything else. So oh, it sounds 10 good. gold or something would probably cover it. It's probably going to be dusty. Yes. It'll be fine. <laughs> it's better than sleeping outside the city. That's true. Okay. We've literally okay. slept on the ground. I mean, you could go that's and true. stay at a different inn if you want. Lucas, I don't want to know that it's very dangerous. Be on your own, exactly. I'll bring some cleaning equipment. Do you know how to All use right. it? No, but someone will. I'll pay them. You could just learn and become an independent man. I'll do it. You can pay me. Yes. I don't think you would want to clear. I'll just take the money. I'll just take the money. It's fine. I can hear whispering quite <laughs> big ears. You do, yeah. Yes. That's true. I'll I'll give anyway. Holds a hand. I'll <laughs> give him 20 gold, okay. like, just in case. And, All right. Yeah. Well, I can, uh, sure. They'll be clean enough, Lucius. It's better than the, the ground. You We've had, on the ground. We have had worse. I was just hoping for some rest in Ellie's rest. <laughs> uh, the pun. Sure, it'll be plenty oh. fine, Lucius. <laughs> all right, Valor, come on, let's go see. Let's go explore the other part of town. And she's like, all right, are you sure you guys don't want me to come with you? Uh, what? Well, you, actually. You want to come with us? Say. She nods. She <laughs> wants to go. Okay. It's an adventure. Let well, me I was like, well, I guess I'll travel these streets all by myself. You can Unprotected. Come as well if you want no, to. I was trying to get that other guy. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, fine, um, listen. I'll go secure these rooms. I'll meet you back at the end. And when you see us again, next time, we'll have a we'll have an echo with her. Yeah. I hope so. Boop, boop, boop. Me too. It's been All too right. long. He gives you a tip of the hat, tip of his uh, Stetson hat. Uh, slings the crossbow over his shoulder and heads off, trudging down the road. And you can see he's kind of fighting the wind a little bit because it's howling and the wind's blowing. And he's kind of got a hand on his hat as he kind of tucks into the wind yeah. and begins making his way down. On his so own. Echo is our unknown first. city. On Sorry. his own in an unknown city. <laughs> I just like fucking with you guys. So he's never been here before? No, he has been here before. Yeah, okay. he knows where he, he is. Knows where Fine, he is. come on. Yeah. It's just. Um, so, Sentry. Um, dramatic. Yeah. If we want to go see Tracker and uh, 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 Scare? We're, we're still yes. with Tracker. He's rolling dice as well to try and freak us out too. <laughs> I'm rolling dice for a reason. Our yeah. dead! Um, <laughs> Tracker's like, well, if you guys want to come, we're back in the. Uh, so, South, South Street. We're all going that way anyway. Yeah, let's go that way. Hey, Arvel. Arvel, we're coming with you, it turns out. It's like, you can't hear you because of the wind. Arvel! Oh. Oh, Arvel! Arvel! <laughs> you guys like, do that shuffling, shuffling thing after him. Yeah. He's like, oh, what are you doing? You have that awkward moment of like, we're going the same way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah, so South Street is... Um, you can... Me, moving away from the, the Queen's Plaza, South Street uh, is... A long line of several narrow alleyways between various tenement houses and workshops for various artisans. Um, you can, there's a very strong smell, even with the rain and the wind. Um, you still get that very faint smell of tanneries and smelti smelting um, that kind of is, perma is uh, very prominent in trade districts. Um, so you've kind of got that boiled leather smell, which is very pungent, but it's kind of being diluted by the rain and the wind. Um, and then you can see like chimney stacks and things smoking away. Um, you make your way through the district 
Uh, you pass by the Temple of Valena, which you did see before. It's like a long uh, building, um, stone with various workbenches, and inside there seems to be sort of like an open uh, little garden where they were like doing um, like medical treatments and things like that. They were like discussing things like that. You move past that, and then down several narrow narrow alleyways, tucked into a small space between the beside the town wall, is a recently rebuilt house. Some of its timber still looks worn and rough. And while most of it is clean, there's the odd scorch mark, stains of dirt and grime. And outside, um, underneath a canvas tarp, uh, there is a woodworking bench at which a guardian uh, with a saw is cutting pieces of uh, kind of very cheap looking lumber. Looks like he's making like supports or some sort of like table bench or something like that. Um, and he's just carving it away. Um, like most of, like Tracker and Scout, he's not as heavily armored as Sentry. Um, he's mainly kind of wooden frame with a few little bits of metal plating, um, vines and things like that, leaves kind of like in his kind of frame. Um, and he has one sort of like big large ocular eye and then like two smaller ones on the other side of his head. Um, and you can see that his hand, the saw is actually kind of built into his hand. And as he's sawing away, it's just kind of that. And then he's got various other like woodworking tools and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, Question. Yes. For Lucius Roleplay. Um, yes. Would I have seen a lot of Guardians in Gusthaven? No. no. This is quite new. Yeah. Guardians, if, if anything, the only ones you might have seen up in the Sky Cities, and this would apply for anybody who's traveled a lot, you occasionally might have seen Guardians like in passing. They would have been travelers or they might have been bodyguards or they could have been mercenaries. Would have definitely been a double take. Yeah, it, it, they always cause a double take. So seeing this many in one place is kind of unusual. Um, and also they're always rare because they're kind of, normally they're found or they're excavated and then they get reactivated and it's just very rare. It's, it's a big rarity to see. Okay. Um, and you can see this other one, track is like, hey chipper. Uh, and he kind of looks up the woodworking one and just kind of nods his head. It's like, oh, tracker, you're back. Who are these folks? Why are you bringing these guys around? And then he kind of double takes at Sentry, he's like, Oh, Guardian! Oh, well, now that makes sense. Hello. Uh, Hello, nice, nice to meet you folks. Name's Chipper. He just kind of like gives you a nod of the head. Ayla, nice well, to meet you. It's been a long time since we had so many people around. Hang on a minute. Sweep! Sweep! We got some guests coming! Um, I'm and it's pattern with their names. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you see like a little, uh, this head, this face, this Guardian looks much more feminine in like her form. She's much more like Sentry, she actually has a faceplate which has like a kind of like very plain looking human face. Um, her hair is actually kind of made from, it looks kind of uh, like one piece of like uh, shaped metal and stone, but it's kind of done like as if somebody had long hair, so it mm. kind of falls down her back. Um, and it's just like one shaped piece of metal. But like if she looks down, the entire yeah. thing yeah, moves with her. kind of it moves with her. Um, and you can see she's very slender framed, not much musculature, almost no armor. She just has like metal to kind of almost outline the body, so it gives her a very obvious feminine form. Mm -hmm. um, and she's literally carrying like cleaning tools and she's like sweeping up and she kind of pokes her head up and she's just like, okay, Chip. And then she just kind of goes back in and starts doing something. Um, and Tracker's like, well, that's most of the family. Uh, oh, hang on a minute, I gotta do something. Smash! And then you hear from the back of this tiny house, kind of and this giant, like, ogre-sized metal fist, kind of almost all armor-plated, grips the side of the house and then pulls around. Oh. And this huge, wide head with a single eye and a big, kind of, uh, hinged jaw kind of moves around. This big, How huge... How big is he? He's, he's large size, so... He's like an ogre. He's, like, nine feet tall. Oh, my God. He's, <laughs> he's super wide. Um, and it, one of his arms just is a chain with a big heavy ball on the end, like a big wrecking wow. ball. Um, um, and the other one seems to just be this kind of like very wide uh, arm, almost like a shield built into the arm itself. And he kind of like, boom, boom, kind of moves up, looks down. Hi. <laughs> Wow. Hi! Wow. My name is Nova, I'm so pleased Dead, to meet you! Name. As you start moving towards him, he like looks at Tracker, smash! And then begins <laughs> raising up, like, begins like swinging the ball hand. Tracker's like, whoa, 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 no big guy, no, 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 these are guests, these are fine, all right? Don't smash these guys. I like his spirit. <laughs> I'm still holding <laughs> my hand up. Just, As yeah. the ball hits, he's just like, <laughs> and grips <laughs> your hand, and it just encompasses Nova. your arm. And he just gently yeah. closes it. It's really nice to meet you. 
Good. <laughs> Let's go. Amazing. That is Hi. terrifying. Hi. I like this one. Uh, Tracker doesn't <laughs> really speak fun. good anymore. He uh, took a few too many blows in the war, so he's not kind of not with us all right. the time. Okay. But he's a good guy. He's a nice guy. He looks after us. So, so impressive. I, I have curiosity. Oh yeah, he was a beast back in the day. I mean, these guys. Yeah. They would get uh, everything shot at them. Cannon fire, magic blasts, everything. And they'd be right at the front, does, smashing through shield lines. Does he have like dents and stuff all over him? And that's the, the, the next thing you notice is he's dense. He's got like, you know, big gashes in his metal plates, Jeez. broken spikes. His shoulders are actually spiked, but most Ooh. of the spikes have actually broken off. But you can still see the remnants of them and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and he just is like, nods his head. Okay. And then he just kind of like lumbers back and then sort of sits down on the ground, <laughs> looking at like the front of the house. Out of curiosity, is he more near to Scout's age or your age, Tracker? Just an... Uh, That's the thing, we don't yeah. really know. Cool. Problem so is, he could he's, just... He, he's, not show, he's not shown any signs of going yeah. feral, so he's got some time left in him, all right? Okay. Look, he's a good guy. He seems great. I was curious because when that one happens, ooh, ow. Yes, and he, this this is a real uncomfortable yeah, like yeah. Ayla is like made a real kind of yep. like oh yeah he could go crazy at any second <laughs> you don't live very long you guardian <laughs> yeah so it's like mm. uh, what uh, brings this many guardians to Kaylee's rest of all places oh that's me the tracker just thumbs towards himself Did you find these guys pretty much yeah these guys were all either uh, wandering around didn't know what to do or. Some of them, like Sweep, well, she got a, she was working for some humans uh, in the uh, upper north of Savona. They weren't treating her very well, so I kind of got her out of there. Um, okay. So this is everyone you Smasher, find. man. I found him in the middle of a stone quarry, just smashing stuff. <laughs> Could barely speak, managed to teach him a few things, and uh, he's been looking after everybody else while I'm out, so. Wow. Um, yeah, this is our little home, and he kind of gestures to this very... It looks like it was probably once an old, like, abandoned house, and Chipper's fixed it up himself. So, but it's all very good work. It's very basic, there's nothing fancy about it, it's extremely utilitarian, but it's good work. Like, yeah, he's... Mass he's, produced. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, yeah, it's Ikea, yeah. but it's, <laughs> it's good stuff. Um, nice. He's like, yeah, let's get inside out of this rain. And uh, he kind of gestures you all in towards the... Oh, I thought we were in. No, this uh, is all outside, like you're uh, okay. kind of being soaked. And Smasher just sits outside, like the rain just... Ding, 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 ding. Hollow body. Yeah. yeah, just like bouncing off of him, basically. But he doesn't seem to mind. Does he fit in the house? Does it look... It doesn't look... Like he doesn't <laughs> <laughs> okay. You can see, probably on the back, you can see that they've put up like a big top. Like right. they kind of like put like a... Like a uh, what do they call it? An awning. And it's probably that's big that's, enough for him yeah, to sit. Yeah, basically, he like sits under that, basically. Aww. Um, he's like, right, well, let's go inside and we'll see if we can get your echo fixed up. Awesome. Um, and then you, as you go inside, you probably notice for the first time uh, two echoes. Uh, two of them are kind of just hovering around the room. Um, and, they look very uh, different they look the same, yeah. No, they look very different to centuries. They look like all echoes are a reflection of the personality of the person with them. They kind of like uh, echoes are a piece of the guardian themselves. So one of them is very plain. Uh, it's just a single orb made of wood with a little blue gemstone um, with little metal bands, and that's it. It's just extremely plain. And that one seems to hover near Sweep, uh, the feminine uh, guardian. Um, and then the other one is wood, but it's kind of very ornately sh uh, sculpted into like a, a D8 shape, like a kind of try it. Uh, what they call it, prism shape. Yeah. Um, and it has like little tiny metal kind of tips, and that one hovers near Chipper. Yeah, looks like a bit of a D8. Bam. Um, and that hovers near Chipper. That one's got an orange uh, orange gemstone in its middle. Um, and they're just hovering around, just like, like floating around. Um, and you can see that the, the Guardians inside, uh, Chipper, Scout and Sweep, they have basically pulled out like what chairs they have, which is like four chairs, like wooden chairs, all look like they've been handmade. Um, a little table. Um, there's no food, there's no cooker, because Guardians don't need to eat. Yeah, yeah true. Um, but they've got other things. They've got things like books. They've got like a little bookshelf with a couple of little books uh, on it. Um, there is a easel, like a painting easel, with like a very worn looking piece of canvas that has been painted over multiple times. Um, and then like a little small collection of paint pots and paints in the corner. Um, and that's it, really. There are there are beds, but they're like just flat, like pieces of wood with like you know a very basic straw mat on it. That's it. 
and they all seem to sh sleep and share in the same room. There's yeah. no like, di there's no divided rooms. It's all just one big open plan space. Um, yeah. Well, come on in. And uh, Tracker moves in, and you can see he kind of takes off like his longbow, hangs it up, gets his quiver out, puts that down as well. Um, Scout is probably playing with like dice or cards or something. He's probably playing like some little game in the corner, um, just playing by himself. And yeah, they bring you in, sit you down. Uh, well, we don't have anything to eat or drink, I'm afraid, but uh, uh, I can. We can go get some. It's okay. We All right. Be here too We're not long. used to hosting people, really. It's fine, you've done a bang-up job so far. Oh, thank you very much. And then the little Warforged lady is like, we try and do our best. And she kind of like bows her head. I am Sweep. It's nice to meet you all. It's got nice a nice meet. little place here. This is a good setup for you guys. Yeah, it's, uh, it, was, it was hard work to convince the mayor to give us this old place, but I mean, nobody else was going to use it. Nobody wanted to buy it. So I think that eventually they just kind of accepted it. And once we proved that we were kind of useful in the old... Uh, hunting around the Iron Wield, they were more than happy to give it to us. So we kind of made it our own and it's given these guys a safe place. I was going to ask, what is the public opinion to Guardians, at least in Katie's Rest of all places? It varies where you go. And you can see that there is, there is a moment of quiet where there is something, but then Track is like, ah, it's like most places, kid. You know, people, some people don't like what they don't understand. Okay. And what they don't know and what they don't understand, they don't know if they can trust. People are always worried that somebody's out to get them, that's all. But it's been fine for the most part. Okay. Well, I mean, we've been traveling with Sentry and nearly everyone she meets is amazed by her. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, if anybody recognizes Sentry, I imagine a lot of people don't, but it's I mean, I recognize Solvin. Guardian in general. Yeah. They, they don't recognize what she is. That's lucky. You might not always find that as the case. Some people, uh, some people worry about us. Like your friend said, people don't always know if, well, if we're all there. Okay. Yeah. We already had uh, an encounter with a, a feral guardian earlier. You did? Yeah. Um, Sorry to hear that. In Dwalinden, it was... It wasn't easy. It was not. Hmm. And I touched its core. And I saw its memories. Yeah, we were going to talk about that. I've never heard of anybody being able to have that sort of power before. We have not met a sorcerer it. before? Can't say I have. Don't even, I mean, I guess, is that some sort of mage? Yes. Not had much uh, experience with mages, really. It's, uh, you're born with the innate power of magic rather than taught through books. Mm. Sounds great. It's Can't say I've met any, though. Well, you have now. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Lucius, Virion Elowin Elenath. Well, that's right. I guess you guys should introduce yourselves to everybody else. Uh, it's like, there you go. There's that one. Uh, oh, you don't have to do it all, but yeah, you can if you want. Quill. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I nice. introduce myself. <laughs> nice to meet you. Chip is like, yeah, good to meet you. Ayla. Like, I'm like over by the bookcase already just like looking through the books. It's mainly fiction. It's mainly like adventure stories books. or books about um, like history, like history of Suvona, I guess, would be quite common that they want to like be interested in. Mm -hmm. um, they're very well worn. These look like, you know, second or third hand books that they've probably picked up like out of cheap stores and things like that. There's not a lot of wealth here. This is all very utilitarian. It's either stuff they've made themselves or stuff that they've got on the cheap. Um, it's not a wealthy life. <laughs> they are living in very modest or yeah. poor circumstances, but they seem happy enough. Um, at this point, uh, Tracker's like, right, well, uh, let's go over and uh, he goes over to like a little storage trunk and he opens it and he begins pulling out pieces of metal, like kind of thin metal shards. Um, he pulls out several kind of like wooden shapes um, and various tools and Chip is like, oh yeah, this, uh, Tracker said something about fixing up your echo, right? Yes, please, yeah. Sure, well, uh, and he gestures over, he's like, why don't me and Sentry work on this and the rest of you just make yourselves comfortable? It'll take us, I think, about an hour or so. Oh, do you mind if I watch, please? I mean, I guess. Can I take notes? You can watch, Is yeah. that all right? Sure. Honestly, she's probably gonna do it anyway, so. Mm -hmm. All right, well. I always ask, it's polite to ask. Stick around. Uh, Out of interest. Were any of the books that you were looking at, anything? Any, oh, no, these are relevant? all fiction, history on Suvona, like, yeah. They're really interesting. Nothing mm. that would be about wild elves. Not yet. I wanted to know. Okay. Don't worry. We'll go to not, the temple of Hesper. Yet. I'm just checking. Not in their little personal bookshelf. She wouldn't have that. I know. She'd <laughs> Don't worry. And I've still got this, and I hold up the glamour disc and power up like the little image of you. Yeah. That thing's still weird, but cool. It's this little Don't worry. flickering 
hologram of Ayla, basically. Don't worry, I got you. <laughs> so, uh, Sentry, you have to be part of the process because yep. it's your echo. So you, Chipper, and Tracker will sit down to make that. I believe that on the, it's basically, it functions the same as a Find Familiar spell, but it should be in your Create Echo spell. Um, it's got the cost and how long it takes and stuff like that. Because you have to spend material components um, and effectively, it's up to you guys. These guys have the parts, but it doesn't look like they have many of them. Right. They are pretty much giving you the opportunity to re remake Echo for free, or you can reimburse them for the cost of the materials. What kind of parts do they need? Like... Yeah. Uh, it should say in the spell. I believe it's things like metal, oh. wood, uh, um, gemstones. 10 gold pieces worth of metal, wood, yeah. and semi-precious stones. There you go. Would so crystal shards from a stalker help? No. I should throw that out. Check? It's um, up to you guys. You can basically just give them the 10 gold for them to replace I mean, their I'd stuff. say we're more than happy yeah. to give them yeah. 10 gold. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Tracker will take that uh, very, very appreciatively. I will count that off the group fund. Yeah. So whilst uh, Tracker, Chip, and Sentry are doing that, um, Sweep, Scout, uh, come over and talk to the rest of you. Um, and they kind of, Scout is like, hey, hey, can I talk to you guys? Uh, what was sure. That? Yes. Yeah, but like, I don't want I don't want Tracker to hear. You don't? Okay. I mean, you like gestures over. Just said that very loudly. No, I didn't say it very loudly. I'm whispering. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm He's old. He can't hear me. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, all right. I get. Where do you want us to go? He's just like gestures over to his little corner where he's got like a little like chair and he's been playing cards and stuff. Okay. He's like, all right. So, listen. I I know you guys helped us out before, but there's something I want to ask. A favor. Right. You think that you could talk to your to Sentry and to Tracker and convince him? It's a kind of a long story, but we've met somebody, another Guardian, who says that they know how to prevent Guardians going feral. Uh -huh. uh, they say that they know a way to do that. They but, do. But Tracker's given up. He's just accepted that that's his fate, and we we need him. We don't want him. We don't want to lose him. But he just, he doesn't want to talk about it anymore. And you guys, you seem to get on really well with him. And Sentry, you know, it's a new guardian. I was thinking maybe you could speak to him or speak to her. And then he, she speaks to him. And Well, I mean, I yeah. think that he would probably, if, ever, if anyone, listen to Sentry because of her. Well, maybe you could talk to Sentry then, you know. Or maybe well, we obviously, our interests align here. We want Sentry to, you know, keep yeah, going. Yeah, right? Who doesn't? Who's your contact, though? So, it's this guy, he's, it was a guardian, he calls himself Breeze. And he comes by every now and then, and he's, he's never put any pressure on us or anything. He's just said that, you know, he's, he knows people, that he's learned this secret, and that he wants, you know, he wants guardians to know about it. But Tracker, you know, he's, he's been around a long time, and he says that, oh, you know, that's not what we're meant for, and he's kind of just accepted that this is, this is it for him. But what's what's stopping Breeze from just coming here? Nothing. But well, he's come here a few times. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, so what type of guardian is Breeze? Uh, he's uh, he's more like Sentry, I guess. He's kind of uh, more armored. Um, he said that he used to be a soldier in the war, but he doesn't do that anymore. Okay. Um, I mean, we'd be very happy to. Keep Sentry along as... Just talk to Sentry about it, you know? Like, just maybe talk to her and then get her to talk with Tracker and just oh. be open to the idea. We lost a camera. <laughs> <laughs> Camera's died. That's right, TJ will get on it and fix it. Um, um. Okay, well, once the um, once Echo is fixed, we'll definitely do that. Yeah, all right. Just Tracker's a bit sensitive about it, you know? He doesn't, he keeps saying that you know, this is it. This is his, this is the end for him. So just accept it. But he shouldn't, right? He shouldn't just accept that that's it. It's, it's, I mean, uh, it sounds fantastic if it's true, but to have a wandering guardian just give you the thing that every guardian wants. Well, apparently he's he's going around and he goes travels to different places. That's why he doesn't stay here with us. He travels to different places and he tries to you know he approaches guardians and if they're interested, then he you know he. Have you seen any of the guardians that he has managed to convince to do this? No. But I guess I wouldn't, right? They live in other places. Why would they come here? Oh, He's gone yeah. off again, TJ. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's no. not back in the studio. Well, you have to be careful with convincing. If he's accepted what's going to happen to him, we can't give him 
a false hope if it doesn't turn out to be true. Yeah. Um, so we can we can definitely try. It would probably be best for us to meet Breeze ourselves and figure it out. Yeah. When sure. I mean, it, next time he's around, I can ask you to. I can ask him. Yes. Does Does Breeze elaborate on the exact thing that it is? Or is he keeping that quite close to his chest? He keeps it kind of close, because he says that at the end of the day, if people don't want it, then that's up to them. It's their choice. They got to make the choice. But he says that uh, it's a, a mag like a magic thing, like a, what do they call it? A uh, spell or ritual or something? Yeah. Right. Why not share that with all guardians and get them to pass it on? Why? Well, he, he wants to, but he says that, you know, you got to be certain, because, well, some guardians, they're not good people. You know, some guardians oh, I see. are kind of dangerous. Right. Some of them, I mean, Smasher's good now, right? But imagine, you know, you got beat up during the war and you weren't so good. That information, you get a guardian who's really good at killing stuff. You don't necessarily want them out all the time. Does this make guardians immortal? I don't think so. Breeze just says it, you know, it adds extra life. It gives them extra more life. time. Right. We will do whatever we can with the investigations. We'll let Sentry know, definitely. A Sentry would be the one to convince, um, to convince Tracker. Um, okay. And then we'll find out what Breeze knows. Oh. Yeah, I think we need to speak to Breeze. I just wanted to talk to you guys, because you, know, you seem like good people, and you got Sentry with you, and I figured that maybe you could speak to him. Okay. Sure. Next time he's around, point him in our direction. We don't know how long we'll be here for. Does he come quite often? Uh, yeah, some, well, he's around all, he's around. Sometimes it's like days, sometimes it's, you know, he comes by every day, sometimes it's a, a week or a month. Okay. Since he travels around, so. Oh, so we might see him in the next day? Maybe. Two. Might be something to stay here for a little while longer? Maybe. I mean, it sounds like the kind of thing we want. Great. Keep Sentry around as long as we can. Sure. It's on our to-do list. Definitely well, up why there. Why Sentry's not here? Have we... Discussed how long she's got. Uh, I know, I do. Oh, Quill knows this. Tom has forgotten. Um, yeah, does, does Quill know? It's Quill like, does yeah, know. okay. Yeah. Um, and I've forgotten how old is she now? She's 13. 13. She's got two years. And that's generally just until the signs begin showing. It's the signs can start showing up anywhere sort of like around that time. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, so 13 years old. And, you know, 15 is when stuff can start happening. Tracker is, how old is Tracker again? He's like 18 or something, wasn't he? Yeah, he's 15. 15. So Tracker's 15, he started getting signs. Then again, he's saying he's seen the same vision that Sentry saw. Maybe that's the beginning? Now, that's interesting. We could eradicate that by me looking at these other two echoes for the younger guardians. Oh, if you look through their memories. If there's any signs of the prime, then, then you know it won't just be an old age thing. I see. Well, Tracker's not discussing wow. this prime with other people, okay. um, but doesn't hurt. Um, actually, Scout, do you have an echo? No. Mine. I. I don't want to make one. You don't want to make one. No. It's weird. But you're a scout. That's what they do. That's that. That's the point. You... What do I do if I if my echo scouts? So your track is echo. No. <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> they're, they're back at least. I'll fix it. Thanks, man. It's yeah, we're having we're having a camera issue. Mm. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna fix it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's the thing is is it's hard for you guys to understand. Okay, like it's not like having a kid or anything like that. Your echo is you but it's not you. I don't know. I never liked it. An extension of yourself. Yeah. And also, if they get hurt, that kind of hurts a part of you, too. Yes, we noticed that in the century when Echo was uh, destroyed. I don't just, I don't, I don't want that. Okay. It's very useful, though. The mm. things that Echo did when it was working, it's fascinating. <laughs> what I noise is that? Better. What did you just do? Are you going feral? No. <gasps> Everyone stand back! <laughs> you're not funny! No, I'm not, I'm not joking. Oh, you're just an idiot. Okay. <laughs> um, actually... <laughs> Lucius. What? Ayla, while... I'm not there. <laughs> while yeah, you're still here, actually, yeah. we should probably not drop the F word so much around here. Feral. So I, I got panicked, <laughs> frankly. 
So why are you guys having this conversation? Because I don't want uh, Rhiannon and, and yeah. Kim to go too far out. So whilst you're working on Echo, and Chipper is kind of helping kind of take the broken remnants of the Echo that you have. Um, and he's basically taking apart all the parts that can't be salvaged. Um, and you're basically having to rebuild him pretty much from scratch around the central crystal core. Okay. Um, and this is an opportunity if you want to change his design, you can do that. Chipper is happy to shape Ooh. it in a different way. Ooh. Or if he can try and replicate the original form that he had, this kind of okay. bramble of, of metal and, and uh, wood kind of shaped. Okay. Um, Flaming skull, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to so like yeah, a so that's something to think about. You don't okay. have to decide right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but whilst you're working on it, uh, Tracker is, uh, Chipper's kind of focused on the work and you can see that he's kind of turning over like the shapes and he's helping shape them and cut them down to size. Um, uh, but while you're talking, Tracker is kind of working with you and, and Nova's watching as well. And uh, Tracker's like, so what's the plan, Sentry? What, what, what do you want to do? Huh? I'm, I guess I'm just I'm helping you know, my friends out. Um, I, would like to, I would like to find my home. I'd like to go back to Solvin at some point and see if I can salvage anything from there, see if there's... I can find out what happened, see if it's even still there. He kind of looks at you and he's like, I don't want to, I don't want to dampen your spirits, but if there's anything I've learned traveling around Eroes for the last while, it's try, try not to, try not to have your hopes too high. <laughs> a lot's changed and the Sundering destroyed a lot of stuff. There's places that I wanted to revisit that are just gone. And I don't know about solving. I don't know if it's still there. I don't know where it might be, but just you got to keep that potential possibility that there's nothing left to go back to. I understand. It's... But, well, if you ever want some place to come back to, you're welcome here. We got to start somewhere, and I figured that it's better for us to be amongst each other than it is to be all separated and alone, so... Well, thank you. It's, it's, what you've done is lovely. It's, so ma it's amazing seeing so many guardians in one place. Yeah. It's... It's lovely. They're good kids. I just hope that they're going to be okay when I'm gone. So he just kind of like nods his head. I don't think about that now. You know. It's got to be thought about. At the end of the day, it is what it is. You know, we've got yeah. we've only got a certain amount of time. We've all got our purpose. That's why life's like changed. So I'd like to try and find solving. At least you know, for most of my life, that was my purpose, and now it's gone. It's well. I don't really know what to do. If it wasn't for my friends, I don't. I I just I think. I'd just be wandering around like, like how you found the other guardians. I just, I yeah. wouldn't have a purpose. It seems like you've got a pretty decent one for now. And if nothing else, I think these friends of yours could do with somebody watching their back. A couple of them seem like a little green around the edges. You know what I mean? You're a soldier. <laughs> oh, I them. definitely need help. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, yeah. but I'm better. You're one with, of those kids. I'm better with a quill than I am with a knife. <laughs> You're yeah. not too bad. You just need a bit of experience, kid. That's yeah. all. It's uh, it's a dangerous world out there, especially in the lowlands. So. Oh, I agree. I you agree. Just gotta keep an eye out. But... I'd rather have paper cuts than you know actual cuts. The things that we've seen in the lowlands. My gosh. Yeah, it's not it's not been easy. No, but did you say my name? Hmm? Did you say my name? No. Okay. <laughs> I totally did. <laughs> 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 but Nova's very strong. She's very, she's very capable. You got some talents. I don't know much about magic, but whatever you've got, it seems to work, so. But no, I mean, the thing that's good, if you've got something to work towards, go towards it. I wish I could help. I wish I knew anything about solving, but I think that, well, it's not going to be, yeah. It's not something I can help with, sadly. And he just kind of nods and he's like, so this prime. Yeah. You think it's real? Oh. It's difficult to know because well, we're not like we're not like mortal beings like humans. We don't we don't have deities. We don't have people we were that were made we by to. other immortals, dwarves, humans. They made us. So. That's true. So it's it's difficult to say. Yeah. Um, if nothing else. I like to think it maybe is real. It could it could be a message. It could be. A sign in that sense, maybe it's just a very vague one. Yeah. Something else, if it gives people hope, I suppose it's not a bad thing. And he kind of leans in, he's like, these kids, they've been trying to, they've got a friend, a uh, guy, another guardian who comes by occasionally. He claims that he has a way of staving off going feral. Really? But claims. I've heard a lot of, 
I've been around mortals too long. They like to lie and cheat and mess each other around. Sometimes, I heard, I heard a tradesman once say, if it sounds too good to be true, probably is. So I don't know. But also, I don't know. It's just like this is meant to be, you know? This yeah. is the time that we're given. That's what we gotta use. I've used my time well. I feel like, well, I don't know. Be like stealing more time. Maybe I should rethink about it. If there know. was a way to replenish your matrix and your energy source, and, and it was legit, like it, you know, it wasn't just a lie or, or fake, would you do it? I mean, yeah, sure. I'd love to spend more time with these guys. I'd like to see more of Erois. Why wouldn't I? But I don't know. Maybe I'm just too jaded. <laughs> see too much of the world, you know? I'm just sure there's got to be a way. It, it relies on energy, right? And energy can be created. Yeah, I don't know much about magic, but you seem to, so if you say so. Give me a persuasion check, maybe. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be an eight. Eight? Plus. Yeah, give me the full plus. I'm just trying to find out my... Because someone forgot their eye. Look, I've been out all day, haven't I? Um... Oh, I have four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. Right. You can use, like, maybe I'll think about it. I know. If I find anything out, I'll come straight back to you and tell you. And sure. don't worry, I, I, I have a good nose for lies and, well, actually, no, I don't. But I will definitely experiment and test and have good results before I bring them back, if you will. Right, you should consider it, too. Yeah, I might do. Two years isn't a long time. Is that, is a lot that what you do. got left? Yeah. It's still time. Yeah. But, yeah. There's still lots to do. Okay. There's always more to do. Always more to do. And with that, uh, I think you guys finished rebuilding Echo. Yay! So it takes about an hour, and the rest of you guys can converse as much. But the conversation tends towards more yes. uh, casual matters. Nothing, mm. nothing heavy, nothing deep. Yeah. Um, and you now have Echo rebuilt. Yay! Do you Are you want writing to change that design? in the biggest left? Yeah. Echo is back. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, do you change his design? Mm, if I add like more metal to the outside structure, will that? No, alter won't his. Him, no, won't make him. So. Um, if you wanted to do things like look into ways of upgrading him, giving like more AC and mm. more hit points and stuff, you would need to spend a lot more money to okay. do that, um, and it would take time. Okay. You would need to like mm. basically the way I'd probably do it is that every time you have a long rest, you can put money towards either research or like experimenting with him, okay. and then when you reach a certain point, maybe we'll upgrade his uh, yeah. upgrade certain stats for him and stuff. But for now, he's just. Uh, normal echo, Little but you can baby. change his, his visual mm. appearance. Nice. Give him a new skin. Awesome. Um, <laughs> but it's a uh, loot box. No. Yeah. You gotta do my yeah. You gotta roll it. Yeah. Cosmetics. Sounds yeah. sweet. <laughs> um, Does he make a noise when he comes back? Whip whoop! <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So echo. This uh, little ball floats up into the air with this little uh, purple gemstone that matches the same colour as Sentry's eyes. Um, and it does the whoop whoop. Um, and then just and kind of bobs quite quite. You would say that if a, if a small metal orb can bob joyously, it does so. It kind yeah. of like does a little sort of like happy little fly around. Can I hug him? Yeah, <laughs> just wrap your arms around him. That is a joyous sight. Wonderful. Ah, <sighs> uh, it's good to see. Man, echoes can be such a real problem sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've learned a lot. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, keep him keep him close. I will this time. I'll be a lot more careful with him this time. <laughs> do all echoes? At this point, they all rejoin you. Guys, yeah. By the way, do all echoes have the same abilities? Like, can you see through your echo? Yeah, sure. It's okay. Like, uh, I know it's like closing your eyes but listening. Instead, you're just focusing through them, I guess. Okay. No, I just was wondering if they had different abilities for each type of guardian. Is that taking off so. your head? Some and echoes throwing it. What? No. But you can still see through your head. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I, Kind of, <laughs> but also no. He's, but sort of yes. He's lost an eye and a and a wing. We I don't, don't really want to as well. like take more off mm. now. Oh, you don't lose it. You put it back on. Bit. Oh, so as you could pick it up again. Certain echoes can assist with other activities. Chip's echo, for example, can help him sometimes. Um, it's got more knowledge in that regard. Hmm. But a lot of them are just used for uh, companionship. Um, they can also. Uh, 
just assist us with scouting terrain and just keeping our awareness high. Generally, it heightens our perception of the world around us. Okay. Hmm. Now, whose echo can I touch? <laughs> that sounds Why do you want to really touch creepy, echoes? Lucius. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm primed and ready. If you catch my <laughs> funny joke. That was a good joke. Thank you, Cedric. <laughs> someone would pick up on it. <laughs> I don't think I've heard Cedric laugh before. No. But I like that that's how it sounds, because that's horrible and amazing. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Um, uh, uh, this is how I saw such visions before and memories of old echoes. Chip's like, Chipper looks over, he's like, well, I suppose. Come here, come here, fella. And the little uh, D8. Echo kind of hovers down. This is a good looking echo. Like Thank it. you. Did you make it yourself? Did, how does this yeah. echo work? We all make them ourselves, yeah. So, Sentry, you made yours yourself back in. Back in Solvin, I imagine. Yeah. Huh. Like I said, he's put his part of us. Fascinating. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I might need to sit down for this because uh, usually it throws me. All right. Into some Just sort pull of. Pull up a chair. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Breathe, Lucius. What? Hold on. <laughs> no, don't, no. no everyone look away thing. a second. I'm having performance issues. Mm. No, it just doesn't seem to react. What did you see, Lucius? Nothing. At all? Absolutely nothing. Not, not even, even a, a reaction. Yeah. What happens if you touch sentries again? Sen Do you mind? No, I don't mind. Mm -hmm. with, if, when you touch sentries, you get the same thing that you did last time. The almost exact same memory. Absolutely the same. That's strange. Hmm. What about the mm. other one? Sweeps. Yeah. Sweep? She's like, yes. Do you mind? No, it's fine. Help us down. Okay. Nothing. Now that is strange. I can see things with Sentry's echo, but not your two. Mm. Maybe it's because Sentry's different. She's a different type of guardian to the rest of us. Tracker, do you have an echo? Uh, not anymore. Do you have any way of accessing your matrix? First bit of a personal question. <laughs> Sorry. It's kind of buried in my chest. I can't really get to it. It's how I saw the feral, uh, the uh, the dwell in den. Dwell in den. Forge guard. Yeah. I'd have to. I'd have to really carve open my oh, chest component. So I don't know. really want to do that. Don't think carving chests no. is a good idea. No. Mm. Well, that's strange. I can only see sentries and the blacksmiths. Sorry. Hmm. I'm afraid that a lot of us don't have much knowledge on how we were built or how we work. We know how to repair our physical bodies, but how the Matrix works, it's, it's a mystery. It's, we don't know. I assume you've already done it, Nova, but this is something to write down. Oh yeah, I've been writing this the whole time. <laughs> so next around. time we find an echo that they give you permission to touch, we'll just try again. And then we'll find out maybe what common factors and stuff. Yeah. Hey, I'm like, I'm like you. Literally I'm on, doing things. I'm literally thinking. on the notebook page that she holds up. It's all the, like, <laughs> it's all echo related. It's all of like the vision that you wrote down. It's Lucius's experience. It's when Nova touched it and everything that you- Probably diagrams about. of like when they've been rebuilding it. Yeah, yep. Yeah, there was a lot of mystery. So in the process of rebuilding it, it wasn't just the physicality of building the shell. There was a lot of mysticism of like Sentry sits with it quietly for some time, mm. um, focusing and you can watch the, the glow of the eyes begins like you see the faint pulse beginning to echo in the Echo's orb and they begin to sync up. So you see like mm. Sentry's eyes begin flashing and the, uh, the orb starts flashing. There's a lot of uh, mysticism, which is difficult to describe. There is obviously just a connection there that can't really be explained. Kind of. <laughs> 56k modem. <laughs> Mom, just, just they remember, they are, they are not necessarily, they are not just robots, they are magical constructs. Magical Let's make robots. a point that they are not robots. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds way fun. <laughs> <laughs> Be head cannon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, do you guys want to do anything more here? Are you going to head off? Do you want to ask more questions? I think just uh, before we go, we'll probably just reiterate to Scout that just to keep us informed, let just, him know where we're he staying. He just does this. He's like, he, he can't wink, but he just is like, I got it. 
Does the uh, Smash have an echo? Uh, he may be of one day, but I mean, not he, can't, he can't really, I mean, we can ask him, but he just says no. Um, and we've offered to help him remake him one. Just says no. Okay. Not every guardian wants one. Okay. Some people keep them for companions. Some people use them. Some people... No. Mm. I don't know if you've written this down, but an echo is essentially an extension of... It's a fragment. It's a fragment. Does that mean I'm technically touching a part of your matrix? Yeah. Your matrix is exposed. Small part of it. So that's why I, I was... Mm. 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 Well, listen, mm. thank you. I appreciate you trying, and I'm glad that we could help you. Well, thank you for all your help. It's really appreciated. Yeah, well, it's been nice. Yeah. And I hope you find what you're looking for, kid. You and the tracker kind of like offers a hand, like as a, just like kind of shakes your hand, goes around to everybody. It's like, you're always welcome here. I know we don't have much, but if you ever need us, we're here. I'm sure Thanks. we'll come back again. Please do. I want to hear how things go, so. I'm sure we'll be back before we go. Yeah. Great. Don't know when we're going yet. Nice. Well, there's plenty to do in the city, so. Yep. Well, I like Guardians. It's great to meet you all. Mm. Great to meet you too. Mm. Nuts. I've loved every single second that I've been here. I can tell. <laughs> don't lose that enthusiasm, kid. Too many people do. I don't think I ever could. It's too exciting. I love learning. She's also, like you're a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yep. That's how enthusiasm's <laughs> lost when she's given names. Oh, it's great. No, but I am a nerd. Right, okay, fine. You like be it. Be proud of it. She's <laughs> seen a lot of stuff and it still hasn't even like slightly dampened, so I'm pretty no, confident it's never going anywhere. Exactly the same. Are there librarian guardians? <gasps> there will be. Ooh. Ooh. Guardians were built to fulfill many purposes. Yeah. Some of us were built to be soldiers, like Sentry, and me, Smasher, Scout. Gonna Some people were built Nova's mouth. to perform labor, like Chip. <laughs> Some people were for domestic tasks, like sweep. So yeah, a librarian or a scribe, a bookkeeper, well, all of that stuff. Some built without that purpose. No, I don't Just think so. Just for the sake of being built. None that I know. Almost every guardian has something that they were built for. Hmm. Um, I've got a headache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think well, it's well. working towards something, but I don't think we're going to see it anytime soon. Um, <laughs> we should, should probably... <laughs> Head, catch up with Arvel, make sure he got there okay. And um, tomorrow, we've got more stuff in the city we want to do. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. should we head off? Yep. Yeah. One of the Gavin. things that would have been happening, by the way, during your hour is uh, I would have realized that because Val is with you, her and oh, Scout yeah. probably would have been like, shit, like looking at each other's knives. Like, she probably yeah. would have been like looking at his cool, like, arm blade thing, and like, he's sh she's showing off his uh, knives. <laughs> like, having a little bit like, look at my knife. My knife's really cool. Yeah, yeah. that's really awesome. So, so was she with Sentry and. Um... No, she was like with you guys, I think. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, I forgot she was there. Yeah. <laughs> so do I sometimes. <laughs> she's always there. Nothing wrong can happen to her. <laughs> <Again. laughs> So, you guys intended to go to the Barrel and Over. Barrel and Over, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you say goodbye to the Guardians in their little uh, abandoned house, um, and you make your way there. Uh, it's tucked round into a corner. It's kind of off the main street, but not too far off that it's difficult to find. Um, it is a squat little cottagey building, uh, two floors. Has very, uh, it reminds you of Rose Hall in the same kind of style of building. Mm. Um, it has a sign uh, with a, uh, a large barrel and a, uh, a very plump looking dwarven lady sat on it with her kind of like legs hanging over the side, um, kind of like sitting almost like side saddle, like turning to the cat, turning to the painter. Um, and when you go inside, there are floral curtains, like very kind of paisley, like patterned curtains over the windows. Um, and inside there is a warmth as there is a fire lit uh, to prevent the, the cold air. Mm. So there is a warm fire um, and everywhere, every surface is covered in things like doilies or little oh, coverings. There yes. are big, thick, like <laughs> knitted rugs and blankets over like tables and chairs. There are lots and lots of framed pictures of cats. Uh, um, oh. Okay, now I'm home. Sounds like <laughs> Dolores Umbridge's office. Very kind of, yeah, this is a very Dolores Umbridge kind of vibe going on. Um, it's all kind of like traditional looking wood. 
um, all like clay mugs and like clay plates. Like it's very rustic, but it's kind of got this grandma vibe to it. Um, and there are a few people in there. Most of them appear to be like humans and dwarves who look like laborers or artisans, um, quietly eating dinner or having a few beers. Um, and as you kind of step in, there is a, there is a, a, a very cheerful looking dwarven woman um, who is meticulously cleaning glasses uh, and these clay mugs behind the door. She's wearing a very kind of basic kind of peasant smock with a loose kind of blouse. She's probably like in her middle ages, so like around 50, 60-ish kind of thing for human uh, years. Um, kind of slightly graying hair, uh, but still a very cheerful, bubbly face. Um, and she looks over. Why, hello! Yeah. There we go. Welcome, dearies. Come on in, come on in. Hello. Great to meet you. Hello. Um, have you seen another dwarf come in in the last hour or so? A dwarf man? Wait, we have quite a few. Uh, his name was Arvel. He would have had a crossbow. Oh, what a handsome man. I do remember. He's up in one of the rooms that he he spent. Are you, are you his traveling companions that we you mentioned? Oh, how many rooms did he get? Well, we've got four rooms and he hired all of them out. Four rooms. And Arvel's in one of them? Well, so <laughs> they are now obviously Space is limited, and I do have a few other travellers staying in the inn. So there, he acquired two with a double bed and two with twin beds. Ah, so shotgun he did say bed. that you would have to share. That's fair enough. We've done that already. I'll That's leave fine. that to decide with you. Now there is a meal. You can either have a breakfast or a dinner. What would you prefer? I mean, we did have a long journey, so dinner. We did. Um, quite. Dinner. Dinner. Sure. What do you think, Sentry? You decide for us. <laughs> <laughs> we can get you... Can we get unlimited warm plates? Is that something you could do? She's you technically get not going to eat them. Yeah. She's just going to... I mean, I know she's not going to eat them. I've met the other guardians well, in yeah, town. <laughs> but are, is it um, okay? I don't really have... I mean, alas... I mean, do you I charge don't, I don't really have that. a way to warm them up. I can sit in front of the fire for a bit. I mean, of course, yes, you're welcome to. With a plate. With a plate, if they just don't play. Yes, of course you can. <sighs> <laughs> so is, is it dinner for the rest of you? So the other yeah. guardians don't do that? No. Okay, okay. Oh, no. we've still got Danelle's stats on screen, actually. Yeah. Oh, we Christmas. probably get rid of those. Get rid of oh, those. Oh. And um, Nova won't be in it. What's your name? Me? <laughs> I'm Melinda Merriweather. Okay. Melinda. Just realised I never asked, and that is... Uh, proprietor of the Barrel and Over. Hello. Hello. Melinda. Well, I've got, thank you, Sam. Uh, I've got a lovely stew, and we've got some fresh bread and some cheese, and some fruits, okay. uh, things like that. If that takes your fancy for a dinner. That does, yes, thank Excellent. you. Very Excellent. nice. Well, I'll go get that ready for you. Now you go find the table, I'll bring that right over. Okay. Also, I just have to compliment on how clean this place is. I am very meticulous about my cleaning. That's wonderful to hear. I'm very meticulous. Um, if you do cause a mess, please tell me. I need to make sure that it's okay. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, with the bread, can you tie it, tie, uh, tear it up into tiny little chunks and just throw it on the floor and I'll go after it? <laughs> <laughs> You're a strange I'll, I'll, I'll tear it up, but I'm not putting it on my floor. <laughs> You've never done that before, Quillette. <laughs> just find a pond, I'll be there. <laughs> before you go in your rooms, Please make sure you take that. your boots off. <laughs> leave them outside. Oh yes, of course. Don't, don't be wearing muddy boots in my rooms. That will not. Yeah, that's just happening. gonna like put she the looks, behind her. Like. <laughs> she like leans over. Hi. Take those boots off before no. you go to my room. <laughs> Talking not now. Is there a tailor or a, some sort of cleaning service? Laundra. Um, I mean, I can clean clothes. You can. Yes, of course. As meticulously as this place. Of course, yes. Oh, it is I... an extra service. It does cost. It's How a silver, much? Silver piece. Absolutely. Oh, perfect. Yes, of course, sir. Yes. <laughs> my absolutely. whole entire while I put my jammies on. Yes, of course. If you so when you go up to the room, change, leave them outside, and then I'll take them up this evening and I'll get them cleaned. What tonight. wonderful but service morning, you provide. That's no wonderful. problem. Of course, of course we do. Uh, so you go find a table. I'll bring that over. Um, your other friend is he's sleepy. He's oh. in one of the twin rooms. So one of those already has a dwarf man in it. Right. So don't be scared. Don't be scared. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> right. Well, and then she gestures to a table. Uh, you will enjoy a, a fine meal. It's comfortable. It, it's not the best meal in the world. It's just hearty. Mm -hmm. You can get benefits from it. Um, but it is a good, solid, hot meal in a nice, warm tavern. Um, uh, the murmuring, the conversation around the tavern is a general murmur, um, talking of local hard worker, you know, workers talking about their day. Um, 
you maybe hear a few kind of grumblings about uh, the abbey um, and the, the priests from the abbey getting more and more vocal. Is that the... The Kamara? racist one. Yeah, Halidor. Uh, it's, I mean, yes, there, there would there have been a few people in town. When you first arrived in town, there was a preacher of Palador who was certainly making it clear that... Uh, you don't like blue people. Visit, visitors <laughs> are welcome as long as they are visitors, and visitors only. Oh. Hmm. That they don't, that this is not their land. Um, and yeah, you hear a few grumblings about that. Uh, you probably know. actually also hear one of them. You hear like a half conversation of like... Um, Hey, you heard you heard that that funny looking fella doing it, singing. Which funny looking fella? You know the one the uh, the one down at the Lyre Smile, the the Sienna Temple. The uh, what do they call him? Furbogs. That's him. He's a right old good singer. I liked him. He's a nice fella. Oh really? Yeah, you should go see him. As he doesn't even charge. You just go and listen to him sing his songs. He's real good. And you just kind of overhear like this conversation the of Furbogs singing. Yeah. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> um. Yeah. Um. Nothing else of interest will happen unless you guys want to talk to each other about stuff. You're more than welcome to, if you've got something to say, something to discuss, to make plans. I'd like to that. talk about Sentry, but when Sentry's not around. Okay. Because well, I'm worried. You guys can make that plan. No. I will go sit by the fire. Oh. I might go and sit with Sentry at the fire. Well, it is time for a break. So maybe we'll oh. do that when we get back. Okay. Okay. Sure. We'll have a break. We're also going to try and sort out cameras and stuff if we can, as best yeah. we can. Um, and fix a few things. We'll be back after this short break. See you in a bit. Bye. 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 I'm so cold.
Hello, <laughs> welcome back. Look at that. Boom. Ah! We're back. We're ready to play <laughs> some Jinjins. We're so ready. And We're so ready. You guys are perfectly ready. Yeah. So we, uh, before we took the break, you guys had retreated to an inn called the Barrel and Over, ran run by Melinda Merriweather, a dwarven woman who apparently loves cats and doilies. Yeah. Um, who doesn't? Who doesn't? Uh, and you had had enjoyed a fine meal. Um, and are about to take an evening's rest, but Lucius mentioned wanting to speak to the group without Sentry present. Um, so how does that how does that happen? Does Lucius tell Sentry to go away? Do I just you kind of wait? notice that Sentry's over by the fire. Right, so you wait for Sentry, he goes and sits by the fire, like gets nice and close to the fire. I'm like looking at Sentry in like, the warm place, like, oh, that reminds me. <laughs> when you have warm plates, do you sort of go into a meditative state? Just like, <laughs> that's, that's Sentry's way face. of taking a short rest. Yeah. It's like, mmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like, just hit like this, mmm, in the corner. So we can just walk away and we not even notice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. There's a few odd looks cast towards the Guardian who's just sat, like, knelt in front of this fire with a plate on her face, just like, mmm. <laughs> <laughs> People kind of just. really soothing, though. Yeah. yeah. It does. So, yeah. It's good. I'd like, I've got really cold hands at the moment. I'd, yeah. Like, a warm, a warm plate. plate. I'd love a warm plate. I've got right a hot now. chocolate right now. This is quite good. There you go. Join me, Katie. Join right. me. Right. Well, oh. carry on. It's good. So, Lucius knows It's really nice to see Sentry with Echo, isn't it? Look at that. It was mm. fascinating rebuilding Echo. There really is a bond between machine and machine. And <laughs> wow. I think Sentry's going to die soon. What? What? Yes. Well, I mean, no, we, like, we've already been over this. She's got at least, a, at least a couple of years before she shows any major sign. My concern is the blacksmith um, and anyone that, that I can actually interact with has these visions, these bad visions of the... Well, not bad visions, actually like elative, kind of angelic visions of a prime. Yeah. And where they're seemingly close to their... Prime. Prime. <laughs> well, how long has Tracker been seeing the Prime? Did we ask him that? I think no. He just did. But he knows of it. True. And he's getting to his uh, expiry date. Well, true. I'm just saying maybe we should take Breeze up on his uh, secret. Oh, I mean, I will do whatever it takes to keep Sentry with us for longer than two years. The other thing I want but to know, which Quite, be quite morbid, but yeah, when can. Tracker does go F word, yeah. do the other, does Smash smash I in front of the others? I does he take him out back? How does that work? I don't believe all uh, Guardians go feral towards the end. They just stop. It's just some go feral. Yes, that's great. Um, yeah, and I think that you guys would know that traveling around Aurelis. Some Guardians, when it's their time, they just they do go. They go. They, they don't go feral. They shut down. Where they just stop. That's it. They just. So it's not a given that Sentry's going to go feral, or Tracker's going to go feral, or Smasher is going to go feral. It, who knows why it happens, or or who? But something does always happen, right? Well, they either go feral or they shut down. Hmm. It, it's like a, it's like an us death. It would be just... a real shame if Sentry were to shut down before she reaches her goal of Sauvin, Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon. <laughs> it's not... I, <laughs> that's a wine. That's, uh, yeah, that's not... I don't thing. think she's looking for a glass of wine. She can't drink. <laughs> I mean, I've got plenty. <laughs> don't know why she's looking so hard. Quest solved. <laughs> You're so pleased with your dumb joke. <laughs> That's the worst part of it. How pleased you are. Wine aside. <laughs> so what are you saying? We need to find Breeze. Yes. Uh, who's uh, Breeze? What? Bre Breeze. Oh, oh, Breeze. You weren't there. Uh, uh, I don't have enough data, but I've touched. That's a new word. One, two. I know. I'm using it. It's <laughs> I'm fantastic. so proud. I've touched two echoes that are considered young. Right. And I've touched a matrix which is beyond gone, and I've touched Sentry's Echo. And those two share similarities, being close to or past it, and the two young ones but having nothing. Did you see the Prime in the Forge Guardians? I 
leave that there was something. Mm. There was a glimmer at the end. It was like a glimmer of something. There was a lot of like hot, cold, like... Yeah, there was. Yeah. You, you, it was specifically was. the memories, like you got the impression it was the memories of the Sundering, like where it, it was yeah. like buried and stuff. But then there were, there was a glimpse near the end of something about the Prime. Oh, okay. I think. If not, there is now. I did see it. Okay. <laughs> there is, I remember yeah. it. There yeah. was. <clears throat> the wind outside is howling really and you can hear do. it kind of slamming the shutters a little bit there was the wind rustles the shutters uh, the rain falls heavy on the roof um, this storm is apparently getting worse um, mm. not quite at a storm level yet but the weather is turning worse and it's it's winter as well it's uh, the long night so it's oh, cold yeah. and the, the night is long well nice well we <laughs> if you're suggesting we stay here for a little longer then that's definitely something we'd do the weather is Horrible, we can't travel in this. No, even I can if we travel. To. Well, we could. No but. such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing choices. What's the need? I'm just saying. Oh. <laughs> I'd love to go to Gold's Rain for obvious reasons. However, I think Sentry is number one priority now. If there is any sort of clue or line down to extending Sentry's life so that she can achieve her goal and stay with us a bit longer, we should pursue that. I would love to have a chat with this breeze. Mm. We are also, Lucius, in a city, town, city, town? City. A city. city. It's, it's a very large town, small city. Okay, we're in a city that has a messenger post. And spell clash. And, well, and spell, but what I'm saying is, if we're staying here for longer, you could, could you message. send a message? You could message Daddy. I could Daddy. send a message to Daddy. <laughs> he doesn't like my handwriting, though. Could someone else write it for me? He doesn't like your handwriting. It's very critical. But would he like ours? It depends if you've got good scrap. I, Nova's got fantastic scribing. Oh, thank you. Mm. I used to write with my left hand. Hmm. <laughs> 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 oh my god! So my handwriting is not... Like a spider died and crawled across the page <laughs> <and> dying breath. <laughs> 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 Jesus Christ. <laughs> is that why they kicked you out? It's just because of the handwriting? Yeah, it's just terrible handwriting now. No one could read anything. <laughs> I mean, that asking. wasn't the only reason. <laughs> but it contributed? I mean, the contributing factor was that I couldn't fly. And also, I never went back. Also, I think that might be another reason I... <laughs> yes, maybe we could write a letter. I can do that. Yes. I think, I think Valor notices what you were kind of what you just said. The others don't seem to pick up on it, but Valor kind of looks kind of sadly at you. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, oh, I know. I'm just trying. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, I, think, I think all of us notice. We're just doing that really like awkward. <laughs> don't yeah, really know how to touch it. that. <laughs> um, <coughs> I mean, we can stay for even longer. I I've got no rush to get to Gold Throne. Arvel does, however. He does, so. but I'm sure he'll understand. Worth a try? Sure. We'll see what happens tomorrow. <clears throat> so with that, you guys can take a long rest. Mm -hmm. Sleep the night. Mm -hmm. Yes! Okay. Cool. The night is troubled. The weather is dark and gloomy. The rain does not stop. The mm. wind howls. There's that constant feeling of pressure. Some of you share rooms. Some of you sleep in separate beds, but in the same place. And Lucius, mm -mm. you sit in the dark, just that voice that's been quiet for most mm -hmm. of the day begins to chip away. I don't like the dark, Master Lucius. There are light, lights, I need lights. I haven't seen them for so long, just chittering away. So cold, so dark. Are they still there? The four girls? Are they here now? They in me. Continues throughout the night. I imagine for Lucius, being quite fragile, mm -hmm. anyway, he starts to become paranoid and starts thinking about these things as well. It is dark, and <laughs> we're, they could be four girls. We put so he gets on. worried. You should put lights on, Master Lucius. I put on some dancing lights for myself. <sighs> it kind of sends these long, dark shadows, and the scarf which you kind of have like next to your clothes. I'm assuming you don't put the scarf out to be cleaned. No. Yeah. Um, melts away into the long shadow that then rises up. 
and it just crawls up onto the bed, clawing along its light, and it just perches at the very end of the bed, and these cold blue eyes just staring at you. You won't, you won't let the remnant find me, will you? You won't bring them here, will you? Will I? Can they find me? I don't know, can they? Does Callus know where I am? Who's Callus? Wait. Does he? I don't know, Master Lucius. What have I done? Have I doomed everything? Can he hear me now? I need a wee. <laughs> Who are you in the room with? Who are you sharing a room with? Yeah. I'm assuming dice. that <laughs> you two are probably sharing. Probably. Val is I mean, probably in the novel. You're probably sharing. Sure. Wait, would Lucius have his own room? He probably He'd would. He'd be with a traveler, wouldn't he? Uh, so you got four rooms. <laughs> the random guy. <laughs> well, you have, no, you have eight beds actually. Okay. So if you guys were in a twin, um, Arbor was in the other twin, um, which would mean that Sentry uh, and because you, you just sleep anywhere. I, but sleep I suppose you could just sleep on the side of the bed next to Quill. It's fine. Yeah. Um, and then Arvel's probably got Valor, and he's probably sleeping on the floor or on a couch or something. And Valor's got this enormous bed. Um, so you would just have a double bed to yourself, I think, at this point. I think that's the standard at this point. Uh, it's pretty. This it's pretty yeah. standard. <laughs> so we have this almost Ebenezer Scrooge kind of like you with the pajamas and the hat. Kind of in the bed as this shadowy figure is just clinging, like sat, like hunched, like hugging its own knees. If it had knees, it doesn't have knees. Uh, staring at you. You um, need to be clear to me what's... It's a lot of fragmented words and you're worrying me. And yourself. Just stares. What do you fear the most? Him. He is... He was the one that tricked Tian Gong and the others. The other leaders. He convinced them. And it was because of that that I was where I was. Am I still me? I don't know, honestly. I don't know anything. I don't know either. Well, maybe you should be with someone a bit more knowledgeable. I don't think I'm capable of maybe helping. Maybe I shouldn't be at all. No solution. Maybe you should destroy me. No, no, don't be like that. No. It's what I deserve. No, it's not. No, no, no. Shh. Calm. Just like, let's okay, see. take a deep breath. <laughs> I do not need to breathe. No, I thought not. That's, I was more, more speaking to myself. Perhaps I'm... Perhaps it is just the darkness. Would you keep the lights going? I'd have to concentrate, which means I wouldn't sleep. And just look at you. <laughs> I'll do my best, Night Frost. And then the form. Do you have a better name? Boat. Okay, but. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of you wake up in the morning. Lucius, um, you could. There's lanterns and candles and stuff. You don't have to keep. Them. Oh, okay. <laughs> it takes me a while to figure that out. Okay. <laughs> you see, it. like the lantern, and you're like, I could just like this. Um, but yeah, uh, and then you wake up in the next morning. Um, Arvel. Good morning. I hope you found the, the place to your satisfaction. I thought it was quite nice. Oh, it was mm. nice, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I'm so um, relaxed, like my, my like vines in my armour are like shrunk down <laughs> and like my arm is just kind of like right. slipping off on my... Uh, and trying to pull it back on, you're yeah. so relaxed and warm. Uh, Valor is still sleeping. He's like, Valor is still sleeping. Uh, I've got some plans uh, around the city. Uh, I know a few people, some merchants here. I'm going to see if I can secure a little bit of money for myself. Oh, okay. So help support us on our travels. Uh, I can pay them back. When I get to Gold Throne, I've got access to my business and money. I can just pay these folks back. Uh, well, w uh, what do you think about... We've got some ideas that might mean we have to stay just a little bit longer here. Is that's that fine. Okay, cool. Well, well, that's... I mean, I've... <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks to y'all, I've got some clothes. I've got a little bit of money. I can stay here for a little while longer. As okay. long as you don't, you know, if you can help me look after Valor and stuff like that. Um, Very easy going. Yeah, well, Quill, I've traveled around a lot. My business is going to keep running in Gold Throne without me. I got assistants, I got people like that. Okay. It's kind of nice being on the road again, to be honest. Huh. One thing I was going to mention to you, think about it today. I've got some business, so I'll be gone. Maybe take Valor with you if you're going anywhere. I got something I was going to run past you. Um, Valor's on her own now, we all know. Mm -hmm. And, well, I don't know what the plan for y'all was when we got to Gold Throne. If you wanted to take her with you, or you wanted to find her a place to stay in Gold Throne. What's your idea? Well, dwarves, family for a dwarf, it's not necessarily who you're related to by blood. It's uh, who you choose is your family. I don't have a 
well, my wife left me uh, several years ago now. I don't have any children. I don't really have anybody to take over the Dagus holdings. I figured maybe, you know, well, Valor could be that. I figured that uh, I could give her an education, pay for some teaching in the magic, make sure she gets that under control, uh, give her a place to stay, a good life. Uh, stay with me at Gold Throne. But, but, I mean, I remember what we heard about that, uh, the people after her. Mm -hmm. Somebody in Gold Throne was the one that sent word to Brett. I don't want Vala staying there if there's still a problem. So I was thinking maybe when we get to Gold Throne, I'd hire y'all put an end to it. Wow, if I'd pay you, of course, uh, consider it <clears throat> adventuring or mercenary work, whatever you want, but if you can get rid of the people after her, then it means that she'd be fairly safe there. It's a big city, there's a load of guard and magicians that can, you know, make sure she's safe. I think that's a brilliant idea, Arvel. I no. think you'd be the best guardian ever. Maybe, but I know that she'll probably want to, she'll probably want to travel with you. I think she likes this whole wandering around, adventuring, fighting, that sort of thing. So she might not want to, so maybe you might need to convince her a little bit, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to ever be somebody who's telling her what to do, so I'm just going to put the offer to her and see what she thinks. I think when we get to Gold Throne, we all need to decide what we do from there. Currently, right. Gold Throne is our main place to go, and then after that, I'm not sure what any of us have. I know where I want to go. All right. Okay. Me, Me too. too. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Sounds like they've got a bunch of plans. Right. Well, uh, okay. <laughs> well, listen, think about it. I just wanted to put that out there before she joins us. Um, I've got some business to take guard of in town. All right? All right. All right. Sounds good. All right. Meet back here later? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. That like, gives you a tip of the hat. Okay. Um, so. Well, so uh, was it Dawn that... Um, uh, what was her oh, name? Malika said, said no, that... it was near in the afternoon, okay. wasn't it? Yeah. She wanted to stay Isn't it stuff. Yes. Yes. Okay, yeah. fine. Um, so what's the plan? Where do people want to go? Um, you want to shop? Before, you want to go do stuff? Before Arvel goes off, can I ask yeah. him if he wants me to send a message to Goldthrone on his behalf? Part of my plan is done. That's fine. I'm going to send that later. Well, maybe we should send a message yeah. to... Daddy! <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to call him daddy. It's my daddy. It's my daddy. At this point, we just hear it so often. <laughs> I, just, I just feel like he's mine. I just feel like he's with us. You talk about him so much. Yeah. I feel like he's part of the team. What? Yeah. He's been with us this yeah. whole Should way. we call you think him? He's like me. I haven't met him. Honestly, so. I can't even. Oh, that'd imagine. be lovely. Well, I thought that. What should we call him then? If, if we can't call him your daddy, Virion. Okay. Mr. Elenasto. Mr. Elenasto. <laughs> Mr. Elenasto. Okay. Okay. Not Elowin. Mr. No. How does your surname Mother. Go? Elowin. So Lucius is your name. Yes. Virion is your father's name. Yes. Elowin is your mother's name. Yes. And Elenasto is the surname. You got it. So we should call him Mr. Virion Elenasto. No, Mr. Elenasto. Mr. Elenasto. Virion, if you become friends with him. Okay. What did you call him to his face? Let's write the letter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you head back up to the Queen's Plaza um, and you make your way to the Wastebuyer. The Wastebuyer looks as it did before, a uh, tall stone tower with the various poles and balconies, but in the daylight you can see that it's a bit more active. There are people going in at the ground floor level, um, you can see them like taking packages, kind of a bit like a post office, people taking letters and packages and things to send off. Um, as you approach, there are guards. Harvest guards stationed outside who just kind of like give you a once over. They're just more there as like security. They're just kind of keeping an eye on things. And when you enter inside, uh, the ground floor is like an enormous circular lobby. There are desks everywhere uh, with, uh, with Arakoka and humans writing. Um, you can also see that there are various maps on the, along the walls. Um, and at the very middle, uh, in a big sort of circular desk, kind of raised up off the ground, uh, kind of barking orders at various Arakokra coming and going. You see a female Arakokra with very bright plumage. Um, she has uh, a, like a chained kind of almost piece of jewelry around her beak 
and then anklets, like these kind of bright gold gemstone anklets. Um, very, very fabulous colors, more like a kind of like a conure, like a parrot, more than a, a hawk like uh, thingy. Um, thingy. And she has like a uh, quill. Uh, she <laughs> has like silk clothing and she's gesturing around like, you're there, come on, blah, 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 send it off. Where are you going? Where are you going? And, she, and somebody comes in, she's like, where are you off to? God front, yes, that way. And, she, and she's like directing all of these kind of messengers coming and going. Um, and you can see people kind of uh, talking to her every now and then. But there are also various assistants at various other desks as well. Um, and what would you like? What, what would you like to do? Approach somebody and, and ask to send a letter? I guess I know the right thing to do. Yeah. So you would know. So Quill, well, you would know that basically this waste by it is you can use it to send letters. You can use it to send packages. You can also copy maps here as well. So like if you want to take a transcription of a map. Um, it costs money to like copy the, the guild's maps, mm -hmm. um, but you can do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Very keen for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can either approach this Arakoka in the middle, the very flamboyantly dressed one who seems to be in charge, or you can go up to an assistant. Have you been to a waste buyer before? No, it's very, very no? This is incredible. busy. You can see it's almost mm. like a giant birdcage inside of like all these different platforms and the Arakokas come and rest. Is it quite they open? Drink drinks. Yeah, it's all open. Like the whole inside is open, like this huge big and tower. And birds just coming in and out. Yeah, and they're flying in through windows. There's like little balconies and then there's also like ropes so they can get up and down easier and That's stuff without really flying. Cool. Um, and then there's, uh, you can see that like packages are taken by the assistants. They're wrapped up into these satchel bags and you've seen Quill's kind of similar satchel bag. Um, a note is attached to it and then they send them up on the ropes. The Arakokas grab them off, sling them on and then fly out. Um, this is so efficient. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. You, you, you okay? Though? I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. Hello there. Uh, Hello. Uh, another <laughs> female Arakoka. This one not as brightly colored, more like um, kind of like a, a sparrow kind of coloration. Uh, approaches like, can I help you? Yes, you'd like to send a letter, please. Of course. Uh, where is the letter going? Godthrone. Godthrone. Uh, that will cost uh, approximately. Can Gold I say how much it is? Yeah, you can. You, you would know. So it's basically um, <laughs> to send a letter is twenty-five gold per estimated day of travel because the guild has to make profit off of it. Basically. Okay. So, so to Godthrone from Kaylee's rest is one, two, three, about three days by Arakoka travel. Is this going to your day? going to Gold Throne and not Gust Haven. You need to send it to Gust Haven if you want to send it to your papa. I guess, yeah. But you also know that Waste Spines are places to collect letters. Like if you're expecting word from somebody, you can oh, also inquire okay. at a Waste Spire like, are there any letters for Mr. Lucius Ellen Oh, uh, should we do that first? Um, yes, please. I'd like to uh, also send a letter to Gust Haven. Sorry, not Gold Throne. Oh, Throne. sorry, to Gust Haven. Yes, Gust Haven is, um, well, it's approximately about three weeks away now. Um, but we do do we do do discounted prices for the Sky Cities. They help uh, supplement funds to enable for costing. So it will cost about a hundred gold. Oh, yes, that's to send fine. a letter to Gust Haven. Wow. We can, and she kind of sees your reaction. We can request this paid on receipts. Um, so yes. the person who receives the letter. Oh yes, that's uh, um, fantastic. But yes. we will need to take a record of your name, and obviously, if the person refuses, then we simply don't deliver the letter. Um, and you will get a black, you'll get blacklisted, you'll get a, a black mark against the messenger guild. Oh. Mm. So I don't recommend that you do it unless you are certain that the person is going to pay. You will. Uh, but I've got to stand up on my own two feet and make my own way, so I will pay it. Okay, very well. Thank you, sir. Well, Lucius, do you want to check if there's any letters for you first? Do I have any letters That's for true. me and first? And the name? Lucius Villian. Elowin Ellen asked her. Let me just go and speak with the Windrider and then I will report back to you. She will know if there is a letter for you. And you see her fly up to the woman in the middle, uh, this bright I don't know why there would be a letter uh, here. Can well, rest. well, there's a check. There's a, a br bit of a brief discussion and the brightly coloured Arakoka kind of looks over and is like, holds up a wing and then she flies over to you, this kind of uh, reception. And she's like, excuse me, are you Virian Lucius Elowin Ellen Astor? Yes. <laughs> uh, she bows uh, deeply. I am Windrider Hesse von Batesch. Uh, I am the uh, current Windrider of this Wayspire. Um, I wanted to come and speak with you. Uh, you inquired if we had had any letters for you. Yes. Well, it is a, something of a curious uh, circumstance, so I wish to come and speak with you directly myself. There was a message posted um, several weeks ago now, about two weeks or so ago, um, 
stating that if there was any information regarding a Lucius Viruin, uh, Elwin Elanasto, uh, or a skyship that crashed, the Sparrow Blade, I believe, uh, that it was to be reported back to immediately. Um, and it was? Well, well, I mean, this is the first I've heard of it. This message was posted Ew. two weeks or so ago. And then recently it was um, rescinded. The, the, the note was, uh, we were told not to worry about it anymore. Oh. Oh. So, I'm assuming that you are Mr. Lucius Viduan Elenastor? Yes, Elenastor? And we did crash aboard an airship. I see. And you have been, you crashed here in Savona? No, we yes. crashed yes. in the, yes, it's about, yeah. yes. Very, very far yes. south of here. Ah. Yes. She bows, cousin? Uh, hello. Yes, very good to see you. Uh, I'm surprised that you have uh, not asked your friend. And then she kind of stops herself. Oh, sorry. <coughs> <coughs> well, um, so you crashed. Let me resume uh, the conversation. <coughs> you crashed and then have been making your way here. That's right, yes. We've been um, held up along the way. Well, I'm quite curious. There was um, there was a monetary reward for information about There you. was? Do you know how much? I mean, it was approximately, uh, I believe, it was not stated specifically, but it was expected to be within several hundred gold for Could information. Could we claim it? Well, that is the problem. The, the request has been rescinded. Who yeah. put the request in in the first place? Um, it simply came from the Elenasto estate. Um, but it has recently been rescinded by the officials of Gusthaven themselves. Mm. Okay, uh, that's fine. We'll just send a letter anyway. Yes, of course. I'm more than happy to do this for you. Uh, that is normal protocol for the Elenasto estate. Just a two-week... Uh, Reward. <laughs> I'm sure. Roll an insight on, on Lucius. I mean, I don't even think you need to roll. <laughs> I think it's very obvious that Lucius is Upset. hiding and is obviously something's going on. Yeah. Um, but she's like, yes, of course. Oh, well, it is 100 gold to send to uh, Gusthaven. Um, it is not too far away um, and we will reclaim some expenses from the city itself. Um, do you have the letter here? Do you need to write it? Oh, uh, we need to write it. Oh, yes, please, uh, help yourself to the writing implements and the writing desks. Uh, parchment yeah. is available uh, for a modest price. Um, uh, it's a few coppers for the parchment and the ink. Um, if, unless you wish to use something more expensive. And then we have our finest parchments available. Um, yes, please help yourselves. And if you need anything other support, obviously uh, the, I would be happy to help you. The Vospatash uh, family is uh, more than willing to help. Thank um, you. It, my apologies again. Uh, you strike me as somewhat familiar though. May I ask your name? Uh, yes, um, I'm, I'm Kila Kad Kalar. I, the Ad Kalar family, I thought that I recognised your plumage. Mm -hmm. um, I, it is good to see you. Uh, I, I, I am aware of some of your family, uh, a few brothers, I believe, mm -hmm. um, uh, work for the guild. Yes, uh, well, they should do. I, uh, yeah, they do. Uh, I imagine they passed their exams. Yes, yes, I believe that they are doing very well. I've had one of them uh, fly through here. Ah, uh, when was this? Oh, this was a while ago. Okay, um, several months. Probably for the best. Um, and 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 any others nearby? Any of the other brothers? I'm afraid not. No, I, the, the last one that came through, uh, the young uh, young boy, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. He flew through, uh, completing one of his first uh, runs, I believe. His uh, first his one. First flights. Um, okay. Do you wish to send a message back to your family, or? Uh, 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 no, no, uh, no. All right. Thank you. Very well. Well, uh, <laughs> please. As a, uh, as, and she kind of glances at the satchel. As a member of the guild, um, you're more than welcome to send messages as you require. So, uh, if you need anything, please let me know. Much appreciated. Thank you. Yes, um, of course. Well, good day. And she kind of flies back up to this kind of central perch and begins issuing orders. Um, so yeah. Can I do some writing in the corner? Yes, please. Okay. So it's uh, it's two copper for parchment and ink uh, to use What's their parchment and ink stuff. It's a silver for the nicer parchment. Let's get the nicer stuff. This paper stock is amazing! It's like Feels 200 good, right? GSM. Feel it! It's so smooth! The quill is so soft on it! It does look wonderful. Lucius, this is so much fun! Good. Well, you can help me write this letter. Okay, you here we go. Letter? Warming yes. up my fingers, so warming up my quill. To... Oh. Okay, okay. Yeah, I am ready. You can be alone if you if you tell the others to. Yeah, I need some headspace. I can't transcribe. Wait, that's what you're doing. I can't say words. Dictate. That Fine. come from my head. Okay. Valor mm -hmm. leans over towards Ayla. Ayla, what do they do about the birds pooping? <laughs> <laughs> and 
and she looks around and she can see that she's nervously like looking up. <laughs> we should leave. She like That's backs really to the, she goes to like the Quill. back wall. Quill! Quill! Uh, yeah. What do they do? Mm-hmm. That's uh, that's some law we're not covering this episode. <laughs> I mean, have we seen Quill? But no, <laughs> we're not talking about it. <laughs> oh, it's just they do it when they're traveling. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so can uh, I can I also pick up um, a paper as well? And yeah. well, will, you don't have to pay. I, no, I know, but I, I boy. want to go elsewhere yeah, sure. to potentially pen something. Sure. So you watch this Quill kind of slinks off. Um, the two of you head over to the corners. So yeah, uh, I'm not going to make you like read it out and stuff, but you guys can take the time to write a letter um, and I'm send it off. Tell Nova to swear what we write to secrecy. Yeah, just make sure that you tell actually talk amongst yourselves about what is written because Nova okay. would obviously know. I sure. absolutely promise this, pinky promise. What? You put the promise in there? No, you. If you do a pinky swear, you have to put your pinky around my pinky, and it's a bond that is unbroken. What, how do you we fight? You cannot break a pinky promise. Once we're like this, how do we do anything? No, we don't have to do it all the time. Just doing it now is a pact. I, it means I will never... So we can let go? Yes. Oh, right. Okay. Yes. Let's pinky promise. Okay. Pinky promise. Pinky promise. Right. I'm ready. Let's go. Okay. So the LNS is always... It's just um, this normal affair to just say... Um, Father Elanaster. Okay. Mr. Elanaster, say Mr. Elanaster, please. Okay, I'm gonna write a oh, rough draft. Are you gonna draft. do the whole letter? No. <laughs> I'm gonna write a rough draft and then I'll like... Yes, it has to be utterly okay. formal and uh, just put right at the start that uh, I'm sorry that I haven't lived up to your expectations. Just throw that in and that unfortunately the, the airship did crash and I'm sorry that I couldn't prevent it and I wish I could do better. And uh, yes, th th I know you sent me on this first mission and to do a really good job but it went really badly and I'm sorry and I will aspire to be a better person and but I've met great people and then go on to detail everybody and then everything we've been through and that I'm actually stronger thank you so while while Lucius has been dictating all this Nova's just looking at him kind of wordlessly like kind of giving him a little small like worried nervous kind of like Okay. Pinky. Pinky promise. Or you're rough drafting it. Yeah, I'm rough drafting it and putting it in, like, but then yeah, I'm just sure. going to be like, Lucius, are you okay? Yes, yes. Sending a letter to your daddy. I Can't just, wait. Can I speak honestly with you? And this is within the pinky promise. It's swear, within, okay? okay, yes, you can. Um, I've never heard you so doubtful about yourself. You're what always, do you mean? You're always so sure of yourself and... You know who you are, and yes. and you always talk Delicious. so proudly of your father. And, yes. And, but you're really... I am proud of, of Daddy. You're really but doing I, yourself down in this. Yes, but the Alanastos, they have to, you know, be the best. But you are. I'm the best? Well, maybe not the best, but mm. you are... You're good. Like, you, <laughs> you survived the Lowlands, and well, and you've been a valuable part of the team, and, and I don't think your dad would be disappointed that... An airship crashed. That's not in your control. You should meet. Uh, you should meet Daddy. He has high expectations of the whole family. Well, he sounds kind of mean. Well, um, no, he has good reason. Yes, he raised in the proper way so that we can carry on the family tradition. You what know. I'm saying, Lou Lucius, is you're good enough, and what you're asking me to write, you're just saying you're not. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that, Nova. That's. Very kind of you. Thank you. I'm just saying, if you were my kid, I'd be really proud of you. Well, that would be weird. And I don't think the timelines would match up, but thank you. Well, okay, I think if you were my brother, and if you were my brother, I'd be really proud of you. And I think you're, you should... Mm, you, you should meet my sister. I think your dad would be really proud of you. Thank you. I hope that comes across in this letter, that we've achieved quite a lot in this time, and I've made very good friends, and we've been through some very... Rough scrapes, haven't we? We have, and we've come out the other side, and you've come out the other side, and a lot of it's become thin because of you. And if your dad doesn't think so, then... We did almost lose our lives to this awful, those awful creatures. You remember the ones? I remember. The cows. Yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I knew where he was put going. Put that in. I knew put where he was in. going with it. Okay, I'll put that in. So while those two are having this conversation, <laughs> 
Quill, you're just writing quietly to yourself. I'm writing quietly to myself, but I very, very slowly, very thoughtfully, and then I scrunch it up and just throw it away. Throw it away. <laughs> mm. uh, Ayla and Sentry and Val. I'm gonna actually just step outside. One because Vala has pointed out that there's poop. Yep. Two oh, nice. there because could be poop. there could be poop. Two, she's just gonna actually want to stand out and sort of look around the streets, and she's sort she's keeping an eye out for wild elves okay. and specifically what trying to see if they have any clan okay. um, markings or anything okay. that she can notice. So when you step outside, the rain is still very heavy and the clouds are grey and dark. You hear the faint rumble of thunder in the distance still, but coming closer. And you look around. Kelly's Rest is full of different people, and you see a lot of humans, a lot of dwarves, a few halflings, maybe even a couple of gnomes, half-elves maybe. Wild elves you don't see many of. You don't see any high elves for certain. There is somebody, for some reason, whatever reason they catch your eye, it's only a brief passing. They are about, they're taller than you, about 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, a broad-shouldered, kind of dark green, but almost greyish in hue, orc. Um, you can see the tusks poking out from the bottom of their lip, but their hair is these kind of thick, matted dreads spilling down their back. And you notice them because they're shirtless, despite the heavy rain, they're completely shirtless and their upper half is covered in tattoos. Um, and it shows all different scenes. And the reason you notice them is because the tattoos depict the sea and a storm and a woman, like another female orc, grabbing a lightning bolt and kind of like taming the sea itself. Um, and he is just swaggering through, rain just pouring down his body. And he wears the garb of a sailor. Um, and for some reason, just as you kind of hear this peal of thunder, you catch this man walking through the crowd before he then kind of disappears off down one of the other side streets. And there's just this odd sense of connection in the brief flicker of a moment. Despite looking for, a, you're kind of looking for the, the clannish tattoos and you see this and there's just something about it which triggers. Um, whether you guys finished writing your letter, Okay, excellent. Out of curiosity, how much would it be to send something to Vortensar? Vortensar is very far away. Uh, Vortensar is travel by sea. You'd have to go two days across to the coast, send it from the port, and then you're talking like months, okay. like maybe a month. So a long old time. It'd be like four or five hundred gold. Cool. <laughs> yeah. It, it is cheaper to send letters from Sky Cities because they have this, um, they, this they have this like agreement with the Messenger Guild that the Sky Cities pay for a lot of the costing because they rely on it so much. So they kind of have like this, like, we'll pay you and then you do discounted prices for us mm -hmm. kind of thing. So sending stuff to or from Sky Cities is cheaper. Sending stuff across the sea is inherently very dangerous as well. So um, yeah, it's, uh, it's expensive. Um, but yeah, 100 gold if you want to send a letter. So mark that off. And then, yeah, Sentry, any plans? Or are you just kind of lingering, um, waiting? I'm just going to hang out with Ayla and be like, hang out hey, with Ayla. what were you looking for? <laughs> <laughs> just like peeling over her shoulder. You. It's like... you can hear the metal pinging off the, the, the rain pinging off the metal. Hi, hi. hi. Just avoid, um, you know, poop. Yeah, that avoid makes sense. What, what, what are you looking for? You, you, you look like you're just, just looking. Just... I'm just finding just find it interesting that, you know, I've seen more guardians than, than wild elves and... You know, that's, that's kind of weird. Yeah, um, it is. Well, hopefully mm. you'll, you'll find some wild elves. Mm. There's plenty of people here. There might even be some in gold throne. I hope so. Yeah. It's kind of, I don't know. I feel, I feel like, I feel like the odd one out. Oh, we'll, we'll yeah, get there. A little bit. Yeah. We'll, find, we'll find them, don't worry. If there are guardians here, then there are wild elves here too. I'm sure. Did you see the, the orc that went Past there. Yeah, he was cool. <laughs> Are you just saying what you think you'd want that I would say? Yeah. Is, no. is that the right word? Cool. Sure. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It just seemed a bit weird. 
And it's definitely weird. Something. Considering it's like a downpour of rain. Yeah. Everybody else is like, and he's just walking through the street like doo -doo 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 -doo, shirtless. Like it's pretty weird. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah. <coughs> I mean, if you wanna, if you, if you wanna go investigate, or if you wanna ask him yeah. questions. Have we seen any other orcs around since we've just since we've been in the? City, not tall. No. Just this is the only one. Yeah. Or orcs. Um, I think you've met one in the episode zero yeah. that we did. Um, but, but orcs are also kind of rare because they, they yeah. especially inland, like yeah, on coastal the places, you see loads of them because they're always on the sea and, and sailing. Seeing this one so far inland is kind of odd. Um, I, I can get them to come over if you want to say hi. <laughs> I, I don't think I want to say hi really okay. right right now. Yeah. But I'm curious to see where he's going because maybe I don't know. Well, you can follow him if you want. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Can you go follow him? Yeah, if you if you want to. I mean. Yeah. I'm just avoiding the poop. Avoid the poop. Okay. Uh, Vala. She's here. <clears throat> you should like maybe. Like being super quiet, like. Maybe you should stay with the. Do you want me to tell you them where you're going? Yeah. Do you want to just stay with them? Yeah, I'll stay with Quill and the others. Just. It's raining, so you can just. Stay warm, I got it. you know. That's fine. Cool. She just nods. She's like, yeah, yeah go, go follow the orc. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, while you go and do that, the rest of you, Valor comes and finds you and is like, Ayla and Sentry have gone to follow an orc. Where are you guys going? <laughs> follow an orc? Yep. What do you mean? Just a random orc? Yeah, he was, he was walking around shirtless. He had cool tattoos. No, Ayla. Ayla was watching him and then they said, oh, well, let's go follow him. I can dig that. I don't know where he's <laughs> gone, so... What do you guys want to do? Well, I've sent my letter. Uh, yeah, they take the letter and then it's basically sent up into... As a minor character note, Nova yes. can read and write Elvish, so she would have written, written in Elvish. Elvish. Oh, nice. Perfect. Ah, cool. Very good. good. I didn't even notice that she was writing in Elvish. Yeah. I just thought it was just normal writing. <laughs> yeah, you probably would have just assumed, like, yeah, that's what writing looks like. Yeah. Uh, Valor finds Quill as well. Oh, hey. Have you hey. done what you needed to do? Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Should we go? Are you okay, Quill? I'm fine. Let's, uh, where, where's everyone else? Where's, where's, okay. where's Ayla's uh, following uh, an orc. She's following an orc? Yeah, Sentry went with her. There are orcs here? One. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've not seen any other orcs until Apparently now. Apparently shirtless. Yeah. Uh, so it probably isn't that hard to find. Well, it was raining outside. Yeah, it was really weird. He had like super cool hair, it was all matted and then pulled back into these big thick kind of like things and he looked really cool. Hmm. And he had a curved sword. A curved sword. Curved swords? Wow. I know. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the four, three of you with Valor, where are you going now? What do you want to do? Do you want to go and um, try and track down Ayla and Sentry, or are you going to go off and do your own thing? Well, the only other thing I would do is maybe try and go to these libraries and... Yeah. But you mentioned you wanted to buy potions to me as well. I'm going to remind you, because you said that you wanted to try and buy potions. Well, I was more going to remind Quill, so... Well, actually, no. Get some potions. Yeah. Well, we can do that when we leave. Yeah, we can do that as a utility thing. We don't yeah. need to do that as a RP thing. Well, it depends mm -hmm. what Mark says. The shop might be haunted. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the haunted potion shop! I mean, um... I don't know. What, what do people want to do? I think, uh, well, Sentry and Ayla wanted to go to the Hesper thing as well. Mm. The Hesper thing. Um, <laughs> Temple. Temple of Hesper. Um, so I will remind you of the things. So Nova mentioned getting potions. You have also, there was an interest in Spell Clash, which you know is here in the city. I have, I have brought it up. <laughs> Lucius is very keen. Um, I think those were the main things that you guys mentioned that you wanted to do. You overheard something about the liar's smile and a, a fur bulg singer. Yeah, the singing fur You heard bulb. about that as well. Um, well, um... Or, unless, or anything completely else. You can go shopping. Like, there are merchant stores, like, if you want to go and buy items, if you want to go and buy potions. I might nip by Spell Clash while, um, everybody else is all... So I believe that is in North Street, which is where <laughs> the key stores are as well. Any open positions, things like that. If, if the shops are up there as well, I guess we could all go there. Yeah, uh, that's I mean, okay. I don't know how Aelia and Sentry are meant to find us, but... That's true. You'll, you'll figure it out, I'm sure. <laughs> so we see, so Aelia and Sentry, you begin following uh, the direction that Aelia saw this orc traveling in. Um, and he, it's not hard to find him again. Like in the crowds, he kind of stands out. Um, are you guys trying to stay hidden? Are you trying to follow him secretly? Or are you just like, Probably, looking where he's yeah. going? Stealth checks. Oh, hello. Stealth check your mic. Mine? 
Mine is. Oh, I don't know. That was good. terrible. 18. 18? Is that with uh, disadvantage? Oh. Because you wear heavy armor. Seven. I've just seen again. My oh, wow. <laughs> exactly. I'm following a topless orc. Yep. Um, so you begin weaving your way through the streets, and Sentry, you actually manage to do a good job of blending in, just kind of standing idly when you think that he might turn around and kind of turning around and trying. Although you're a guardian, you do stand out. The fact that you know that there are other guardians in the city means that you kind of have this hope that, like, well, maybe he'll just glance over you, kind of like, be like, oh, it's one of the other guardians. Ayla, you have a lot harder time sta uh, staying hidden as you are taller than most um, and your bright colors, especially your bright hair, do tend to stand out. And whenever you have to try and act casual, it's just that awkward like... <laughs> <laughs> um, but he doesn't seem to dissuade the orc. He kind of glances around, sees you, probably looks at you, but then just shrugs and then carries on. Um, and he heads down East Street, which is primarily, you can see there are a lot of parks, um, lots of kind of, not poor, but tenement buildings. So this is probably where the poorer citizens of the town live. But there are also a lot of parks here, lots of uh, little kind of like gated greenery areas with trees and forests and plants. Um, and there's also a large barracks. You notice that the Harvest Guard have a large fortified barracks here. But he weaves past all of that through various alleyways and comes to a small plaza nestled between several kind of buildings. Um, they appear to be abandoned, the buildings here, perhaps like warehouses or merchant, you know, storehouses, but they're abandoned. And he arrives at a plaza with a large tiled pool at its center, a wide pool about 10 feet wide, 10 feet across. Um, and at the very tip of the pool, there is a statue of an orcish woman in sort of like long kind of leathered armor. You can see that she has a curved sword in one hand um, and in the other one, she's kind of raising up towards the sky like a fist. Um, and she's kind of standing very proudly uh, looking up at the sky itself. Um, and you see the man kind of like moves up to the tiled uh, pool, um, gets in it like so that he's basically like, it's just like his kind of top half is remaining. And then he just raises his hands up to the sky, claps his hands, you can hear him sort of like muttering something under his breath. And then as he kind of lowers his hands here and he just turns around and floats like on the water itself with his eyes closed. And then you just hear a, so what are you doing following me? And he kind of like calls out while he's floating in the water. Your tattoos. You like what you see, huh, elf girl? Mm, no, I'm <laughs> curious. He kind of like opens an eye and he kind of pulls himself up, swims to the edge, pulls himself up, and he kind of drips with water even, you know, the rain just doesn't seem to affect him in any way. He kind of whips his wet dreads back, and you can see he's very tall and broad. <laughs> um, he does have a slight Polynesian kind of like vibe as well to the features. Um, he's got a very Maui kind of like all the tattoos up his body and stuff as well. Is he like Jason Momoa? Um, more, more Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> Uh, a nice mix of the both. Kind of, yeah. Uh, but a bit more grizzled. He's not as uh, not as handsome. He mm -hmm. definitely, he is, he's not bad looking, but he's got like scars and you can see that like, he's got like little pock marks like his cheeks and stuff like that. And he's, his hair is these thick dreads that are kind of matted. Um, but yeah, he's, uh, yeah he's, he's a big broad dude. And he looks over and he's just like, what about them? Obviously you're not interested in that way, but you followed me here for a reason, eh? Storm doesn't seem to bother you. <laughs> Why should it? A storm. Ah, he kind of looks up at the sky. He's like, it makes you feel alive, eh? Walking around, knowing that at any point, death can rain down on you. Feeling the rain against your skin. Ah, and he just kind of smiles. It's like, he turns around, he's like, plus it helps that I am a priest of sorts, of the storm chaser herself, eh? He kind of looks around, and he looks at the guardian like, now, your kind I've not seen much before. We've heard the tales of the Guardians, but not many that we get to see out on the open waves are. It's very impressive. Well, thank you. I don't see much of your kind. No, I suppose not. Uh, I've heard tales, good. though. Some of uh, my ancestors in the war, they would uh, sail in the great fleets. They said that the Guardians would ride on these great metal ships alongside them. Mighty warriors, so you have my respect. But what about you, ah? Uh? Storms, uh, intrigue me, currently. <laughs> I bet they do. They intrigue anybody who has a sense of danger, and from what I know of the wild elves, your people like a, they like a good fight, ah? Uh? They do, true. 
You seem to be, like me, the only one of your kind around. I've seen a few of your kind around in Kaylee's Rest before, but not many. Do you know if they had any clan markings? Seen a few of them with tattoos. We probably got into a couple of fights with them. I called their tattoos ugly. They did not like it, so we had a bit of a scrap. But uh, I can't say anything. They're, they're thugs. They're not good people. They uh, go to the shrine of Atelicus here in the city. They have illegal fights. They fight with beasts. That's not for me. That's, there's no adventure. There's no sense of wonder in that. That's this not what is the, the shrine you go to? This one? He gestures. Uh, this is the shrine to Zephyr herself, girl. The storm chaser. The mistress of the sea, mistress of storms. I'm surprised you don't know of her, but uh, she's very important to my people. She guides us. I don't know much, but something that I definitely need to know more about. Storms and Zephyr. Why is that? You're looking for a uh, new faith, huh? You're going on a journey, perhaps. Lots of travelers want to get Zephyr's blessing before they go on journeys. They're worried that she's going to strike down their ships or sink them beneath the waves. Nothing like that. I'm just gonna, like, clench my fist a little bit and let the lightning kind of crackle around this. my arm. And at that, he's like, oh, ho, ho. now that is something. And you say what? Is that something you've always been able to do, huh? Not always, but recently it's becoming more of a a thing, an ability, I don't know. But Zephyr interests me. Your tattoo with the lightning bolt. She is, she is the mistress of storms. They are hers. And if you have this power, it comes from her girl. I can tell you that much. What do you want to know? You want, I don't have any books. We don't give out pamphlets in the church of Zephyr. Most of her uh, worshippers are my people. We call them tide watchers. They help guide our fleets. More interested in if you know anyone else who has this, let's say, gift. I mean, other tide watchers, but we are all faithful. We are people that dedicate ourselves to Zephyr. We study, we learn, we teach, we guide our people. I've not heard of many that can uh, summon lightning like you can, unless you're some sort of wizard or sorcerer. Oh, no. But you don't strike me as that type. Maybe I can help you. I can ask Zephyr, but... And he kind of grins. He's like, the storm chaser doesn't give away anything for free. You want something in this world, you've got to be prepared to risk. She only rewards those who are willing to dive into the depths, put their life on the line. So how badly do you want these answers, girl? I'm not sure you can give me the answers I seek. I think I need to find people of my own kind. Well. But what is it that I would need to do? <laughs> I can ask Zephyr for you. See if she can give you some answers. And a goddess, well, even one as fickle as the Storm Chaser, has great lots of knowledge that she can provide. And like anything, girl, surely your people must know. If you want something, you have to take it. And he just kind of like grins. It's like looks around. It's quiet here. There's no one to interrupt. And he just kind of like stretches his back and then pulls the sword free. Life is a risk. It's a battle. And a storm. There's no mercy in a storm. You put your life on the line and he holds the blade up. You manage to beat me? I'll see. I'll get you some answers. Yeah. As as he says that, the thunder erupts over Kaylee's rest, and the rest wow. of you hear it. This kind of, oh, and there's a nice. flash of lightning in the sky, as if the storm itself is answering the question. As he stands there in the rain, these kind of thick dreads falling down his back. As he looks over, he okay. turns. He's like, "What's your name?" Ayla. What's yours? Kalu Utoma, but you can call me Kalu. And then he kind of drops down into like a little relaxed fighting stance. See, you got that hammer. Why don't you come and show me what you can do with it? Don't hold back. And then he kind of just puts the sword on his shoulder. 
<laughs> okay, we're doing this then. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Initiative. She's gonna rage. <laughs> oh, roll initiative Whoa. for me first. Uh, uh, oh yeah, go have it. Go, go for it. Um, as you're falling into the stance, he does look over. He's like, Guardian, no matter what happens, don't interfere, or your friend won't get any answers that she wants. Stand by my word. Just a okay, laser out of Seventeen. <laughs> 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 There's your answer. Seventeen. Wait. Okay, Ayla, you're going up first. I would like to rage. <laughs> so you, as the as the thunder <laughs> overhead, you just kind of feel that moment, and you clench your fists around the grip of the hammer, and then the <laughs> the lightning erupts around your body um, as you feel this kind of surge of adrenaline rush into your form. <laughs> <laughs> He's stood like on the edge of the pool, uh, about I'd say like 10, 15 feet away from you. Okay. So you just rush in. Rush in with the okay. hammer. Um, 15 to hit. 15 does not hit, Wait. unfortunately. Wowee. 15, yeah. 15. Top so you all. swing. Um, Damn it. He kind of dodges very nimbly to the side and brings the this kind of curved scimitar down, blocking the strike. And it does kind of push him back with it, but he kind of slides back. Deck save. Deck saving through. That is a four. So, three lightning damage. So, as you do though, as the, the two weapons smash into each other, the sparks from the metal erupt, but then along the blade, this kind of jolt of lightning erupts from your hands, strikes him in the chest, and he kind of grunts, and he's like, <laughs> Good, good. Yes, I can tell that she's with you. And then he brings his, um, no, in fact, he kind of like brings his hand back and then he thrusts his hand out forward. I need you to make a, I believe. No oh god. I need Whoa. to get the player's handbook out. Oof. I just need to check what kind of saving throw. I can't remember if it's con or strength. Either way, I'm sure that you'll be pretty good at it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If I roll well, I mean... that is though. That's like my question. I don't think you need to. Your strength and con saves are insane. Constitution saving throw, please. 20. 20. So 20. you feel this kind of vibration of thunderous force around your form. Um, you can take half damage. Um, so that's going to be... That's going to be eight thunder damage as you kind of feel this force is erupt around you. That's already half. That's already so, okay. um, and because you're not resistant to thunder damage, it's only weapon damage cool. when you're raging. So you kind of feel this like, <laughs> as you're like knocked back, but it, you kind of push against it and you're not thrown backwards with it as he kind of thrusts his hand out. And he's just like, the storm doesn't give, girl. The storm only takes. Come and take what you want from me. <laughs> I'll try again with the hammer then. Okay. 23 to hit. 23, that does hit. Yes. Um. So this time you kind of take the moment, the momentum of him luring his guard to cast a spell. You sprint oh forward, God. lightning quick, slamming the hammer into him. Eight from the hammer and then a dex save. Yep. Uh, that is a 16 this time. Uh, so half damage. Yep. I rolled a six, so that's three. Three. Ooh. So again, you kind of strike the hammer and he leaps to the side, the lightning just kind of grazing past him. Um, as he does, uh, as you do that, he gonna, he's going to swing in twice with this curved blade. Uh, that's a 24, mm -hmm. and then the second attack is a 16. Uh, no. So just the 24 hits. Where's my d10? Oh, there it is. <coughs> I love that that's while nine there's a storm, <laughs> there's uh, loads of lightning damage. Nine points of damage, it's like he, yeah, so that would be five, because that will round up, I think. Um, so five points of damage as this kind of swipes across the side, but then as he does, he kind of gestures with his other hand, and a long trident made of lightning kind of shimmers in spiritual energy and whoosh, kind of goes down to strike. Bonus uh, spiritual weapons. Oh, cool. uh, spiritual weapon. Cool. I think it's bonus action, isn't it, to cast? Yeah, yeah he can't it. cast, he can't attack with it this turn. He can't attack with it this Don't turn. Do you not? I, I think you can. Good. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure that can It says happen. as a bonus action you can move and attack. Uh, oh, you can. Yeah, you can't done. You can, yeah, you can do it. Okay, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, I've been doing it wrong for like two years. Forever. Ooh, that is going to be a 24. Oh, damn. Yeah, so that I should happened. have used it against the um, white one. You did. Do, 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 no, I cast do. it and then didn't attack with it. Right. And then that's going to be another do, 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 11 points of force damage, not resistant to that. Force. 
He's hurting me a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so a, this spiritual weapon kind of strikes down and <laughs> you kind of feel it slam into you. And as the pain erupts through your body, it's you begin to feel like the world is almost like a, the deck of a ship and the storm rolling above you, the fog seems to kind of outline your vision and you can see waves that weren't there before and you can hear thunder and lightning erupting around you, but your vision focuses on this one enemy in front of you. What'd you take on your mm -hmm. turn? Uh, okay. Um, that doesn't hit, that's a bad roll. No? No. How could brutal reckless. does this look, by the way? Like, no. It's trees. brutal. I'm not yeah. gonna. It's like they're two slamming into each other, no holding back. Yeah. Okay, so you miss with the yes. attack, um, but you still make a dex. He makes a dex save. Yep. Um, Eleven. Okay, so he takes four lightning damage. Okay, so you can see that as that blast hits him, he's kind of thrown back. He has to make a concentration saving throw. He passes. Um, on his turn, he will try and strike you only once this time with a scimitar for an 18 to hit. Yep. So that's going to be another six points of slashing damage, half to three. But then the spiritual weapon comes down for a... That's going to miss. Uh, so these, this spear, this trent, slams into the ground as you leap to the side, hammer swinging, already in another swing. Oh, fuck's sake. That's a two. So that doesn't hit. Would you like to rent? No. <laughs> okay. Not yet. So he's going to try the same thing again. This time, uh, his uh, scimitar strike fails to hit. His spiritual weapon does as a natural 20. Ah, Strikes you right in the chest. 12. That's going to be 14 points of force damage. As this lightning slams you into the I'm chest. Ten hit points now. This, um, <laughs> this is going really fast. As he looks down at you, as you're kind of like, you can see like blood is trickling down, like staining through the clothing. Sentry, the cheerleader on the side. Uh, you can just hear the thunder <laughs> like erupting thing. over the side. You don't see Sentry anymore. Like you just see this kind of like fog and waves and this opponent in front of you, and he seems larger than before. And like you can see the lightning outlining his form as he's kind of raising this kind of like lightning trident over his head, ready to slam it down. What do you do? Ah, uh, right. Yes. Ooh. Twenty-two. Yeah, that's gonna hit easy. Yeah. Eight, nine with the hammer. Yep. Deck saves. Go, 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 go. Uh, that's a 15. So half of three. So, so two. two. Yeah. Okay. This isn't going very well for he me. kind of like stumbles back. <clears throat> and you can see he's like taking a blow, but he looks at you and he's just like, What answers are you seeking? What do you want to know? Why do I have this power? And he's like, ah, Good. Then I hope you're willing to risk everything to find out. The trident fades and you see that the storm overhead has like really kind of hit its nexus above you. He reaches up to the oh sky. Oh no. Sephir, grant her the answers she's looking for. And he pulls as a lightning bolt slams down into the ground, making dexterity saving throw. Oh no. Insta-death. This is so Natural 20. Oh. Ooh, natural 20! Oh. <laughs> so as he calls it down, he uses, he's gonna use a channel divinity ability. It, it's a call lightning that does 30 points of damage. <gasps> so you take 50. No. Oh my God. So you, at the last minute, you throw yourself backwards, desperately trying to reach out of it. But as you do, he kind of like thrusts his hand forward. The lightning bolt curves and slams you, sending you flying back. You don't remember hitting water, but your body kind of push down into the depths. Um, essentially, you see Ayla just slam into the ground, and then he stands over her and he holds his hand out to you. As you begin sinking through what you think is waves, you feel a hand kind of beneath you. It pulls you up and you, you gasp as you see this giant kind of outline of a feminine form, kind of almost sheathed in cloud and lightning itself, and she lifts you up and you hear this kind of deep rumbling voice. Your powers, they are mine, given to your clan long ago when they came to Eros. When you, when they gave up their pretty lives among the clouds and came to live as beasts, I saw great worth in them. Your people are my people. I gave them the power to survive, to take what they wanted, to fight. What else do you wish to know? Make a death save. 
success. Pass. Success. Oh. Uh, where is my clan? She nods. And as, you, as she lets you go, you're standing on the water now itself, kind of gently bobbing and swaying as you feel the lightning coursing over your body. You'll find the answers that you're seeking. Things will become clearer in the Golden City. But I can tell you now, there are others like you, not of your clan, but of the Lair de Lan. The four clans that allied themselves against the remnant. There is one. She controls flame as you control the storm. But the Abbey believes her to be a heretic. She will have more answers. Go, find what you seek. Prove that you have the courage to delve the depths. And I will travel with you. Make a death saving throw. Uh -oh. Okay, so Sentry, you are, st this guy has stood over Ayla's body with his like hand outstretched, he's still holding his sword, and she's on the ground. Yeah. I'm not sure if she's breathing, what are you gonna do? Um, I mean, I'm like, um, um, is, is you she- You gave is, a word not to interfere. I don't, is she okay? She is getting the answers that she sought. Okay, okay, it looks kind of like she's on the ground. There's another beat. She doesn't appear to be breathing. Uh, she's, she's on the, she's on the ground, is she? Um, you, are you sure? She's... He does not appear to be moving. Um, okay. Uh... Ten. Okay, ten success. success. Okay. He looks down, and then you watch him just reach down. He, and you can see the whole time he's been like flicking his eyes down to Ayla, and then he reaches down suddenly, and there's a kind of jolt of lightning, you can't spare the dying on Ayla, so you instantly stabilize. And you just feel this like... <laughs> Can I run over to her? <laughs> yeah, you run over to her. Ayla! <laughs> oh, that freaking hurts so much. Seven Jesus. Hit, seven oh. hit points. Seven. Oh, I'm so glad you're okay. See, I didn't know what to do. There's another gonna... kind of like spread of magic erupts from his hand. Oh, that was so cool. Ah. <laughs> ah. Five. That was cool. He High like... Five. He looks down cool. at you and he offers out a hand. Did you get the answers you were seeking, Ayla? Yeah, actually. Well. Like, pulls you up kind of thing. That sucked. But I also respect you a lot right now. <laughs> you don't get anything for free. And you don't get many answers without a little pain. I'm sorry that it had to come to that, but that's the way Zephyr works. There are other gods who are kinder, but... They I don't think go. they'd fit with me very well. <laughs> Neither do I, girl. And he kind of slaps you on the back. <laughs> He's like, you need some healing and a strong drink. I know a good place. Excellent. I can heal you if you want. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> and you, Guardian, even though your friend was at risk, you stuck to your word. I respect that. Yeah, it was scary, but I, I trust you to some extent. I don't recommend you trust many like no. me in the future. <laughs> But it's lucky that your friend has such a connection. If not, that could have just been, I would have perhaps just been another murderer. But that's not new to me. Fair. Mm. No. Come. Mm. So you do that you with everybody. Drink, at least. <laughs> yeah. Just everyone who meets. I will accept that drink. <laughs> just some so kid wanders up like... <laughs> hey, I heard about Zafi, he sounds cool. <laughs> yep. Oh, another one dead. <laughs> oh, well. Shit. Ayla, 15 points of healing. 15 hit points of healing. So, uh, across town, uh, you begin to hear thunder and lightning kind of crashing around you. Um, but why, where exactly are you going? Do you go straight to where the spell clash stuff is, or are you going to go to the stores? Oh, head to the stores on the way, I think. Yeah, and okay. pick up potions. Can you remind okay. me how much potions cost like the first. Well, you'll have to go and inquire with the storekeep. Um, when you ask down. for shops that sell potions, you are pointed... Potion seller. Potion seller. You are pointed in the direction of <laughs> just a place called... <laughs> you are pointed in the place of a, a place called Rose Meadows Medicine. Rose Meadow Medicines. Okay. Rose Meadow Medicine. I just love that we've had this really cool thing and we're just like, la la la! 
I oh. want to go shopping. Oh, it's going to get more la la la. Uh, you see that the, there is a building that seems completely out of place with the rest of oh, North sorry. Street. Um, the large store looks more like an elongated fairy tale cottage with a thatched roof, flower boxes beneath the windowsills, and carved wooden beams and pastel colored stained glass windows. This is And wonderful. there is a sign outside of a beautiful flower garden. Um, and it just says in very beautiful, elusive script, Rose Meadows Medicines. We have to go here. This is so nice. It's lovely, isn't it? <laughs> it's so lovely. Nothing so wrong. you guys step inside, and when you, as soon as you enter, you are greeted by the smells of lavender oh. and fresh flowers, mm -hmm. and the whole store is covered in plants and beautiful flowers, and behind a very tall wooden counter. The, the counter is like nearly like, four and a half feet tall off the ground. And then behind that, you see um, a beautiful woman wearing sort of like very delicate silks and she has long blonde hair woven with flowers and little plants and vines. Um, and she's uh, looking down and you can see her that she's, she's talking to a little plant and she's kind of tending to it and she's pulling off like little delicate buds and you can hear her kind of like speaking. Uh, and she's just like, don't worry, I'm just gonna take this one. And then she pulls it off delicately. No, I'm <laughs> Let's leave. <laughs> and, and as you open the door, there's like a ding, 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 ding. Hello. She like, lo she like looks up and you can see these big doughy light eyes, like these big bright eyes with this long blonde hair and this thing. And she's like, oh, hello everybody. So good to see you. Welcome to Rose Meadows Medicine. I am Rose Meadow. Oh Welcome. Why can't Thank we you have so a much. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Hello. Isn't the storm quite bad outside? Yes. Oh, I hope it's so rainy. <laughs> <laughs> My God. <laughs> oh, can I help you today? Oh my goodness, a birdie! <laughs> 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 And well, she's like, you guys oh, you're got it. So sweet. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> He's moving out. But as she begins to move from behind the counter, and you hear hoof. <laughs> oh, as as she a, phone? a centaur emerges oh. from behind this thing. And it's about four feet of horse and then her human form. So she's very tall, but the horse is quite slender. It's like a small white horse, um, little hairy sort of like hooves and things like that. Um, and she just walks straight up to Quill and like reaches down and like literally wraps her arms around. Oh, oh you're all wet. Oh, let me find you something to dry yourself with. Mark. And she like begins <laughs> scooting around looking Don't for something. Don't push your weird kinks on me. No, <laughs> do what I want. <laughs> I just want to buy some potions. She finds like a little blanket and she like brings it over and she's like, ah, oh, and she like wraps you up. Oh, thank you very much. Um, That's okay. Uh, do you do this to every customer? These do a wet as well. No, most of my customers are adorable bird <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love animals. Really adorable? I've got, I've lost. The, oh, you the... poor thing. Oh no, you <laughs> Yeah. Can so I, do you need something? You need medicine? I Did mean... Did you kiss it better for him? No, it's... Yeah, no, I would. Well, it's fine, yeah, it's I fine. Would. It's not... Are you sure? I'm not in that much pain. Okay. Um, oh, hello. You're so cute. You're blue. Thank you. Hi. You're adorable, by the Thank way. Thank you. How can I help you today? Are you looking for some flowers? Or some perfumes? Or some moisturizers, Ew, shampoos. Moisturizers. <laughs> yes. Interesting. Do you need any shampoos or conditioners? Oh, yes, there was a lady in town. She's got very straight silver hair. Malika, she's so pretty. Now what? <laughs> what conditioner does she use? She doesn't use any. Can you believe? You're a liar. I'm, <laughs> she looks <laughs> genuinely. She's like, no, so I wouldn't sorry. dare lie. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> No, she, it's incredible though, I, I agree. I told you, it's because she's an Asma. Awesome. That's what Asma. I've heard. Awesome. Awesome. Right, well. Uh, well, what can I help you with? Can you stop hugging me now? Oh, sorry. <laughs> and she lets you go. Thank you. But thank make you. sure you get nice and warm, Birdie. Oh, thank you, I will. <laughs> potions, we need potions. We potions. need healing potions. Oh, you want some potions? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. of course. I have various different potions. I make them myself. Mm -hmm. They're all organic from local plants. Oh. Um, and she like trots over and she's got like a little locked cabinet 
Um, and you can see she pulls out a little key from around her neck and she unlocks it. No. What kind of potion? Just healing potions? I have no. some other ones that can do a variety of effects. Could you define your version of healing? What would this achieve? Well, it would restore energy and close up minor wounds and, you know, make you feel better. So it's not like essential oils, that sort of thing. I do those as well. Do Would you, you like no, some? No, 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 no. The okay. healing potions, thank you. Do you have one of those like copper bags? I also have <laughs> antitoxins. <laughs> I've also made some potions that have, you know, make you more resistant to flame or cold. Um, you know I have what one I've which noticed? can make you bigger for a short time actually, or make you smaller. I've noticed recently, actually, that Lucius's aura is a little off. Do you know, I have crystals for this. <laughs> you. Would you like some crystals? Are they colourful? Yes, of course. I think Peridot would restore your energy. No, his <laughs> eyes just narrow, like, she, oh, I'm using rocks for crystal healing. Come on now. I also do my own particular style of healing slav. Which solve, sorry. Which is, <laughs> sorry. is very, it's that quite good. It's, it's, it's stronger than a normal <laughs> potion, <laughs> but it takes a bit more time to apply. Can I have a look at your crystals? Are there any orange or blue ones? I have some lovely blue ones. Yes, for they're the very good for making calm a peace of mind. For the so podcast. If you, did like you that. suffer from anxiety? <laughs> I don't know. Yes, actually, I have a shadow. Oh. Shadow? They, they don't want to know. No. Oh, you don't want it. That's looming over you, I can tell. Yes, it is. Um, Surprisingly. Uh, Night Frost in your mind probably That's would God. alert you. <laughs> He's like, Marcel Ernesto, this creature is not from Eroe. He comes from another realm. Where? I don't know how she found her way here. Um, so anyway... How did you get, uh, do you mind if I ask some personal questions? This is so fascinating. I believe that everybody should be very open about themselves so you don't have any illusions. Where did you come from? I was found in a forest by a nice dwarf lady and she took, taught me everything I know and she raised me and it was really nice. You don't remember before that? No. Oh. But I'm told I'm not from Erois. Can you believe it? I can. Yes. I'm from another world. Isn't that wonderful? That's lovely. I don't want to find that. How lucky we are that you came to Erois of all places. I know, me too. Potion, please, and uh... so I have so I have four potions of healing. I can make about four a month with my ingredients. Um, I can have my potion that makes you small, my potion that makes you big, Healing. potion that makes you resistant to flame. What was the salve? Oh, that's, I call it Rose Meadows Miracle Ointment. Right. And, and you and apply it and it will restore energy and heal minor wounds. But it does take a bit more time than a potion. If you were applying it to somebody, it would take maybe six seconds. Six seconds? It's an action to apply. <laughs> As opposed to a bonus action. I see, but it, it does more health. Yes. I see. Okay. But Money. What <laughs> when you said it's going to take oh, longer, I didn't think so it was going to take So, six my, my potions. <laughs> now, I'm so sorry, <laughs> but because yeah, of uh, Kayla's rest, they have really high taxes. So, my normal potions are 75 gold. I know that's more than some others charge. I'm sorry. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's such a shame. You have to. You have to survive, that's fine, we get Thank it. Thank you. Well, yeah. Lucius. People are not very nice to me sometimes, so I have to, you know, make sure I've got enough money. Mm. Well, we've been to all of the shops and we couldn't afford, you know, for my eye starting oh, to Oh, your, your poor birdie eye. <laughs> make, 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 <laughs> oh. it, make an, a deception or persuasion <laughs> check. <laughs> In I fact, mean, actually, no, this is more performance. You're like, you're playing it up. My, mm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have? I wouldn't like, understand. With, am I able to have advantage with no her? performance? Yeah. Natural oh, that's 20. Natural 20. You see, like the lip Ooh. wibble, like owie, and then like tears start forming in her <laughs> eyes, and she's like, "Oh no, yeah, okay, well, I'm Birdie, I'll sell it to you for like, I, I the lowest I could go is fifty-five. Oh, that would be wonderful. I do. It's, it's, Cheaper than anyone else would be. Does it hurt that much? It hurts so oh, much. Oh no, stop! 
<laughs> you've, um, you've saved. So yeah, fifty-five gold for the regular healing potions. Okay, uh, we have six hundred gold, and it'll be two twenty for four. Okay, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. These I don't actually have any potions. at all. Standard healing potions. Okay. Yeah. It's just the healing potions. Yes, please. No crystals. Okay. I may come back for your shampoo, but I don't need it right now. Okay, that sounds great. I'm here. Thank you. Always here. Mm -hmm. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you as well. It's so nice. Thank <laughs> you for coming by. And she pulls out the potions are in a little like hemp bag. <laughs> And there's like lavender petals inside it. Of course. And she yeah. kind of leans it over. And you can see that her horse body is like this very, you know, powerful horse built. And then she delicately like holds out this tiny little hemp bag. She could kill the shit out of us with one. Yeah, well, yeah. like, I mean, like, she's, you can tell she's strong. Yeah. Like, her horse form is very strong. Yeah. But she, her actual top body is very elven. It's like very lithe and very uh, delicate. Um, um, and yeah. you say, what healing potion? Regular healing potions. So, four standard healing potions. Okay. Okay. You take one. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, with that, with you buying the healing potions from Rose Meadow, uh, um, we can one? start to wrap up. Wow. Because we ran over a bit last time. I will say for podcast listeners, during that whole conversation, Mark kept putting his two hands <laughs> on oh, his chest. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, cupping it, cupping his face. Yeah. And fluttering. I'm gonna role play. You had the badass orc. I'm just Storm describing fight. it. You had to make, you had to do something to the opposite. It, yeah. it was a hell of a battle. I thought yeah. Rose Meadow was planned to be this way. Yeah. That battle, oh that my was, god, that was incredible. Uh, crazy good. I love that. Oh, I don't know if you want to say You know it's a good episode. Cloud Elves. Was she a high elf then, her clan? All, all, no, all, oh. all wild elves yeah. were once high elves. Elves yeah. were just one type. There was mm. just elves. Yeah. Yeah. But then and the And then sundering. after they the Sundering, a bunch of the elves went, Fuck no, we're not just abandoning everybody down on the ground. And then they left the Sky Cities to come and live right. yeah. in the lowlands. Yeah. And they basically, over centuries, they became more wild and yeah. their century. forms changed. Over, century. over a century. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get through these donos then. Thank right, you, start reading everybody. Oh. Earl Arembe, thanks for donating. With no message, but thanks anyway. Thank you very much. Uh, Dragster donated. Hello, just caught up so I can watch live after a busy time freelancing over Christmas. So it's great to see the best D&D crew live again. Can I ask a favor? Could you roll a d20 for me, please? As I have a chat job interview this week. Plus two modifier. <laughs> Ooh, oh, sorry, bud. 14. You got 14 from Century. You got nine from me. Five. You got 11 from, no, 13 from me. Nope. 14, you got you a 14. Go. Highest you got was a 14. Good luck. Ooh. Thanks. Uh, Nightjar donated. Hair is uh, looking fetch as fuck. Kim. Thank you. Happy pre-birthday, Thom. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. Thom. 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 Super cool warrior donated. Hey guys, I love your streams. You lot uh, got me into D&D &D and now I'm addicted. By the way, uh, Mark, a beast walk, a playable character race? And if so, do you plan to release it? When I release the Aurora's campaign setting, one day, <clears throat> eventually. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Someday. Ooh. Yeah. Kim. Huh? Me. Zachary no, <laughs> One has donated. Happy Void Day for tomorrow to the Golden Boy Tom Hazel. Thank oh, happy Void Day to the Golden Boy. Ha ha ha! Prank. Ha ha! Pranked. That was a birthday prank. You got pranked. Who the fuck is Tom Hazel? I don't know. But he got one L less than Tom Hazel, so he's probably less cool. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Hazel's alt account. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tennessee has donated one hundred dollars. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a first time catching you live. Found out uh, about you guys during the jingle oh, jangle. Nice. Oh, cool. And uh, when I saw my favorite hat daddy playing D and D, mm. and have been binging your bits ever since. Mm. Thanks for all the entertainment Mark. you guys provide. Keep it up. Thank you. I'm no one's favorite. <laughs> um, Desiree fifty five has donated. I wish uh, there would have been two smashers. That way we could have called them the Smash Bros. Uh, uh, twenty. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Hal forty k is donated and said awesome as well. Awesome as always to catch a session of Aroes. Thanks. Thank you. Pinkle. Uh Lightning Wind Dragon has donated and said thanks, Kim, for inspiring me to try DMing myself. What happens at an insane asylum when the warden's killed, the nurses have formed a cult, and a patient has escaped and is intent on killing everyone? <laughs> <laughs> Any very tips Kim. or tricks from this Infernal Asylum, Kim? Uh, I used a lot actually from the. D and D Beyond from all the books, like various. I took campaigns and modified them. You used bit. Yawning Portal, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, Yawning Portal, and um, mm. also just. I mean, one thing Mark keeps telling me: don't overwrite it. Let them explore and sandbox and Wing do what it. they want. Oh, yeah. but also take pictures of the monsters guide to taunt your players with. That's what Kim did a lot. Yeah, I sent a lot horrible. of really mm. horrible pictures to the guys. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks nice. for that. 
Nice. And Darth Day 41 has donated and said, Happy almost third birthday, High Rollers, and Tom, yeah. I suppose. You're definitely one of the best Toms oh. in the Yogs class. <laughs> Is it next week? It's uh, the 17th. 17th, so next week will be our, our closest one to it. Next mm -hmm. week will be our birthday celebration. Yeah. yeah. We got, three. We've got two donations Crazy. from Lightning Wing Dragons. That's three donations from oh, Lightning wow. Wing Dragons. Lightning Wing Dragon in attack mode. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, I made a mistake on this one. <laughs> I'm tired. That's my excuse. Uh, Nova, energy can be created. Me, energy cannot be created or destroyed. Woody from Jack. Well, Nova has her own science. Technically, yeah. magic is creating energy from nothing. That like, was my... In a, in a fantasy magic. setting, anybody yeah. that can cast a fireball is creating energy. Yeah, I, know I think you'll find. Or it's just right being stick. absorbed from like a fire plane and we're just like using up resources. <laughs> there is, yeah, that, that could be a cool Recklessly. premise, like that you, every time a wizard casts magic, it's borrowing from an elemental plane or something like that, but in a realist, no. <laughs> Next anyway. campaign setting. Magic is magic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Keep going. Can I pass it over? Yeah. There we go. There's another one There's from Lightning one. And Dragon. Ooh. Uh, second one. Uh, pulses flash in the echoes, echo in the echo of echoes. Nice. Yep, that's me. Thanks, Lightning Wing Dragon. Azul Aura, watching high rolls is always more fun than revising for my English prelims. Can I get a good luck for my exam in my next week and or happy birthday for my good birthday luck. tomorrow? Good luck and happy birthday. Right, also, yes. for a good luck and wait, your birthday tomorrow? Yes, birthday <laughs> boys. <Back> also, Kim, <laughs> your new hair is fantastic. Hat birth on. Thanks Hat very much. Home. Varys, thanks for the donation. No message. Purple Bear Cat, thanks for making our Sundays more entertaining. Thanks very much. Kay, do you want to read some? Uh, sure Nev1600 has donated saying, Great episode as always. Any advice on fun Feywild encounters? My players are trying to find their way there. Feywild is pretty to make, cool. To make a point, Glyphes, it's not pre-recorded. This is always live on Sundays. Yeah. Like, I'm literally, this is live now. Yes. We live. Uh, any advice on Feywild? No? Um, okay. I mean, yeah, make it weird. Make it weird. Read lots of like old fairy tale, creepy yeah. fairy tale, yeah. weird stuff. Uh, Lightning Wing Dragon has donated again, Whoa. saying, "Mark, question: How long in game time do you, do you plan to have this campaign go on for? If this question is too spoilery, then at least answer me this: Who was the first person to circumnavigate Eruis by airship?" That's a cool question. We'll think about it. I will yeah. try to think of an answer to that. In terms of how long, I mean, <coughs> it depends on how long these guys play for. Mm -hmm. Wait, we might, and, and also it might be that if we reach a point where like doing something like a time skip, like a two year time skip makes sense, we'll do that. Like it's, it just, I, we don't know where the story's gonna go. It's not planned out. Level 20. There's another donation I, from I definitely Lightning wanna try and take us to level 20 this time. Oh. 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 Wait, how can, you, yeah. how can you circumnavigate Eroas? I thought it was flat. Uh, it's a cube. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, another from Lightning Wing Dragon who said, Crikey. so you could say that Quill's writing is chicken scratch. Whoa! Uh, Nightjar nice. has donated saying, someone please hug Night Frost for the love of Siaska. Yeah. Meth Manu has donated very generously. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much um, Ace of Thorns has donated saying, Mamogasm? Momoa. Momoa, Momoa Gasm? Momoa Gasm. <laughs> Momoa Gasm. Okay, yeah. People want that <laughs> Aquaman. Christ. Especially for you. Nightingale has donated. <laughs> <laughs> With Love a happy it. birthday, Thomas. Thank you very much. I still don't know who that is. Um, <laughs> I'm going to find out. L has donated. Uh, Mark, I honestly have to say that this is one of the best ways ever to give a player lore dump. Uh, in D&D, fiction books, gross. in anything. <clears throat> yeah, you really um, it, right? $10 and top marks. That Here's the cool. thing. Cool. Just to make a point, imagine that on that first death saving throw, Katie rolls like a nine. That's a death mark. Next one, she could have rolled a one. Yeah. Yep. No, I, she didn't roll a nine in the first one. Literally dumped but I'm saying she, if she, but like, if I had, like, I imagine, done. like, that's the scenario. There wasn't like a, oh, you're at zero, but I'm instantly going to hear you. I wanted there to be a potential that that I was like, it. I like the yeah, was really dying cool. for answers thing. Yeah. It's very yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh, the game guy has donated with healing slav. I'm dying over here, Mark. <laughs> what? Um, the new bolt of nice. Yeah. The new restaurant. Healing slav. <laughs> <laughs> Healing Slav. Hey. You've also got to do it in the Rose Meadow voice. Healing Slav. <coughs> uh, Healing Slav. Actually, sorry, I've got the chat up right now, and apparently Nightjar knows who the Nightingale is. Interesting. I'll My find God. out. Uh, Azul Aura, sorry. Azul Aura, uh, we had seven daddies this week, and of the 53 people who bet, Nightjar, Mongoose, and Skiddy Smith bet correctly. So many feels this episode. Between Nightfrost, Quill, and Lucius, I'm crying in all of our PTSD sons. And Lucius has daddy issues, like a certain winter elf we know. Oh, yeah. no, oh, on the least tree. Yeah. Mm. Uh, mm. Lightning Wing Dragon, uh, Mark, you're someone's favourite. Not mine, that's Kim, but someone's. <laughs> 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 wow. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> There's someone out there for you, Mark. What the yeah. <laughs> 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 And wow. uh, Denim Knight has donated a quarter hundo. Nice. Uh, great job tonight. Can't wait for the next one. See you guys soon. Aww. And no one more. Uh, JK <laughs> Quinn, sorry, it's just um, come in. Yeah. Nice hair, Kim. And Mark, any advice for people needing to find a new group? My old group has gone off to uni and I need a new group. I, face. I don't really have advice because it's just like, you know, go to Roll20 if you want to play online, go check your local uni society if they've got yeah. an RPG group, oh, yeah. check your local gaming stores if they have RPG nights, mm. find a bunch of friends who have never played before and DM for them. If they've gone to uni, they've got loads of time to play yeah. D&D. Yeah, they can go, do it on our, um, go on our Discord as well. Yeah, Discord. yeah Discord's really good. They're always looking for people. Cool. Yeah. Sounds good? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So. Awesome. Happy birthday, that, Tom. Happy birthday, Tom. Oh, thank you very much. We'll be back next week. For for more birthday. awesome high rollers. It's going to be our three yeah. year anniversary, so join Wee. us for that. Um, I'm excited because there's way more stuff to do in Cali's Rest that they've not even touched on. Yeah. Really can't wait to do Spell Clash. Me. Yeah. 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 It will yeah. happen. Also, I kind of really want you guys to meet this Furbolg singer because it's really dumb. So, <laughs> uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks very much for tuning in. Uh, I don't believe there's a stream after us today, so enjoy no. your evening watching your cinema or doing whatever. See Bye. you! Bye. Goodbye! Bye. 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 Bye.